Hey hoodies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hope Mess Tom, and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. We're doing a full collection declutter. Grab some cocoa, grab, you know, your night snacks, grab your girl dinner. If you happen to be new to my channel, hello, welcome. I would love to have you subscribe. My channel is about loving my makeup collection as it is. I also do some reviews on my channel, but part of why I'm doing this declutter is just because I noticed some stuff in my collection that I think it's time for us to part ways with. So we're gonna go drawer by drawer through my makeup collection. I'm gonna do some swatches. I don't know if I'm gonna swatch like every single thing, but probably, you know, we'll see as we go. We'll see what I get into, but I do wanna like show you some things. I'm gonna tell you why I'm getting rid of some things. But yeah, it's like the middle of the year. It's time for declutter. I feel like maybe I wasn't as ruthless as I could have been in my end of 2022 declutter and we're just gonna get into it right now. Let's do it. my drawers a specific way so it's gonna be a little bit of a mishmash it's not gonna quite go category by category it mostly will but my top drawer is my testing drawer so these are things that have yet to be reviewed on my channel in a very real way or that I'm still testing and so that's what's in here but I'll give you a, I'll give you a peek I'll give you a, a, a look So you probably have noticed that there's like two big brands in here. If you are new to my channel, then you might not know that Surat sent me a lot of their makeup to test out. I have their new bronzers in here. I have blushes, I have eyeshadows, I have liquid blushes, I have powders, I have foundations, I have a lot from Surat. I'm still testing all of it, but I'm closer to being ready to give my final thoughts on my Surat stuff than I am for anything else. So I'm just gonna take all this Surat stuff, we're keeping all of it. Here are some other things. I guess I keep this out of the way. This is, I don't know why this wasn't my testing drawer. In, in fact, I have been looking for this. If you've been around for a minute, I, in the past, have done single, indeed like single spotlights, and these are all the shades that I have done. My big brain idea, what I wanted to do when I was after so many was try to declutter ones that I didn't think I needed. You know, I don't need every single eyeshadow, right? Like I'm, I, I wanna hold on to ones that I think I'm gonna use more than ones I'm not. And while they all can be beautiful, I don't need all of them. I don't know why, I put them in that drawer, but I'm gonna just put that aside to be in my eyeshadow drawer. Speaking of eyeshadows, my friend Danny sent me this eyeshadow palette from Narimi, which I put in a video. I'm still testing it, so I also posted a video on Saturday in case you missed it, and that video was particularly about how I'm feeling about eyeshadow palettes. This one is not something that I am not using right now. I'm gonna test it some more. The reality of it is, is like, this is probably not long for my collection. Not because I wasn't nice, not because I don't think it's like very beautiful. When it was sent to me, it was, it was like, you'll like these eyeshadows, but it's like not your, it's not like you're, it's way more colorful than you're into. And that's just the reality of it. It's just more colorful than I like, but I still haven't gotten too much into it. It's a beautiful piece, you know, it's like a beautiful thing to hold in my hand. The quality was really good. I really liked it, but it's just like, this color story is just, it's not super up my alley, right? And at this point, why bother? I, I, I And I don't mean that to be like rude, but I'm not reviewing this, right? This isn't something for review. This is a Chinese eyeshadow palette. It was really hard for Danny to get a hold of. Danny was kind of enough to send it to me. It's not something that I'm not even sure how one gets in America really fully. Like I know you need like a forwarding address. It's like a whole thing to do. So it's not something that is really gonna be a focal point on my channel anyway. I still wanna play with it. And I might keep it just because I think it's really beautiful. Also, like, I'm like, because, like, it's, like, it's very beautiful. I have some friends who are very interested into this, and so maybe I could pass it on to one of them. I'm not, again, I'm not decluttering this yet. I'm still gonna play around with it some more. Maybe there will be something in here that really sparks joy and I find completely unique unto this, but I don't always think about makeup in this way. For me to review this is kind of pointless, right? In case you don't know, 
China, you can't like access YouTube in China. So it wouldn't even be helping consumers in China make a decision on this. And I don't even know if it's still available. So like for me to do like a full detailed review or spend a lot of time on this, it just doesn't make a lot of sense for us. Now, if I loved it, like if I say, if I love the color story or whatever, and I keep it, I'm going to use it on camera. Like that's not going to stop me, but it's just like, it's not a folk. It's like, it's like not good focal point of content. I think like what I've done with it content wise being like, trying out this palette from this Chinese brand that you probably never heard of is probably the most I'm gonna do like making this the star of any kind of show. Someone did say, I can't believe you didn't even do swatches of it. So maybe we will do like a short or something where I'll swatch it, but yeah. Uh, I'll keep playing with it, not decluttering it, but I don't know how long it's gonna be around. Also, it's still in my testing drawer, so it's like, I don't need to make any decisions about this stuff, I'm just kinda like showing you. So I guess we should just talk about these since I'm touching them. My friend Andromeda on Instagram sent me some about face stuff that they were not interested in. And a lot of you have been very curious about what my thoughts about, about face are. And I've started using them, but I'm gonna buy some more products to do like a, a full brand review. So I mean, there's still plenty of products I don't have from the brand. We'll see, but you know my feelings on Nashi Pear. And if you don't know my feelings on Nashi Pear, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> I think it's like a very beautiful product and I'm happy to have it. And I don't know, I mean the blushes, TBD, like, I don't know, I've used them a couple times, I'm like kind of whatever about them. But these, really good. I don't know, I've looked at the shade ranges, it's not as nuanced as I wish it was. You also probably see a lot of makeup forever, so sometimes I'll do like these series where I'm quote unquote secretly trying a brand over a period of time. So makeup for, these Makeup Forever items have like appeared in some content already, but I'm working on a, a full detailed brand review. The Makeup Forever stuff is stuff that I purchased right now so far. I really, really, really love some of it, and some of it I really do not ever want to touch again. <laughs> kind of what it is. Also, I have a Patreon, if you're into that kind of thing. Patreon.com slash Hope Mess Tom. Patrons already have the first impressions full video of my Makeup Forever stuff, so if you want to check that out, it's a way to do it. You don't have to do that. There's no pressure to be on my Patreon. All patrons get the same exclusive content to Patreon. And patrons, I do know, I know you, I owe you something. Hopefully I've recorded something and uploaded it over the weekend. I just, time has gotten away from me in a very real way recently. Anyway, I'm gonna put all the Makeup Forever stuff. I'm not gonna open it all. You'll see it when you're supposed to see it. I am working on a cream contour video, so. I don't normally do like comparing kind of situations, but what happened is I ran out of the cream contour that I've been using for literal years. I was using the Fenty Cream Contour in Amber. Well, it's a cream bronzer in Amber. And I liked it. I obviously, I panned it. I think that the pan is somewhere in here. We'll declutter it together. I know what I'm interested in as far as trying cream contours, but I did also ask my subscribers and my Instagram, people follow me on Instagram, I'm like, what are the cream contours that you would be interested in? So I have three of them so far. I have more on the way. So there is going to be like a cream contour video within the next couple of months after I get my head around everything. Let me tell you something, spoiler alert so far, not going well <laughs> with these three particular products. Well, that's not true. I so far like this, but I, I have a feeling that if this is my winner, and I, you know, I could do whatever I want, but I have a feeling if this ends up being my winner, this is the Victoria Beckham Contour Stylist, which is like really tiny. I think people are gonna be upset, but it is so far, where I'm at, <laughs> like it's so far, like if you, a little, a little insider information is that this is actually the one that is like impressed me the most so far out of the three. Oh, this is Makeup Forever too. In addition to Danny sending me that beautiful Narini palette, she also sent me some pigments slash eyeshadows. Ugh, I don't know, did that just spill? Is that why? No, they're still in there. These are from Tammy Tanuka inspired S Sigil, Sigil, Inspired Sigil Tammy Tanuka. Inspired Tammy Sigil Tanuka. So these are just two loose pigments from them. If you don't know, if you're not familiar with them, they're a Russian brand and right now commerce with Russia, like we're not allowed to do that in America. So we can't really get our hands on this. I'm assuming Danny bought these before all of that happened and they were just like kind of laying around languishing. Loose pigments are weird, right? I don't think everyone's into loose pigments, but I have put this gold on my eyes before and when I did, everyone in the comment section was like, what the hell, <laughs> what the hell is that? So it's really pretty. I wish I could try more Tammy Tanuka if I'm being quite honest with you. Really, the situation is right now I currently can't. And then she also sent me this. I don't even know what this brand is. Clapatch.pro. So this is another pigment. I haven't even opened this one yet. So I'm still, fussing with these. So I actually have two more things that Andromeda sent me. And I think, yeah, okay, two more things. So they sent me the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer in 
the shade Meringue 2.1F. Here's the deal with this concealer. I think it's beautiful. I think it's lovely. I don't think it's better than the concealer I already have in my collection, and I've used it a few times. One time it did look a little bit cakey, but that was rare. I don't, like, that was a weird day. Like, I, do you ever just, like, throw on makeup and not the most prime of circumstances? I think that's what happened with me and this product. Like, it was, like, the... They were not, but like I put it all over my face as a foundation. I don't like this applicator. It's super messy. And so like globs of it will just come out. So I felt like I had no control over how much concealer. I don't use a lot of concealer under my eyes. And I think perhaps that applicator applied too much concealer and that's why it looked really heavy and thick and cakey. But as a foundation all over the face, it was like really beautiful. It was like really natural looking. I wouldn't even say it. I'm gonna guess that they probably call this full coverage, but I, I don't see it as such. I, I mean, if you apply enough of it, probably. I don't love it. So I, I'm actually gonna clarify this. I've played with it enough times where I feel comfortable. Also, so this is unscented. And so Huda did have a problem when the brand initially launched that like all of their stuff was overly scented. People who had sensitivities to scent or just kind of like don't like fragrant things had big issues with it. So they took the scent out. It smells gross. <laughs> It doesn't smell like it's turned or anything like that, but it just doesn't smell good. And I do like when my products smell like nothing, but for some reason this one just, it doesn't smell good. <laughs> it doesn't smell good and it's really off-putting to me. So sometimes I have opened my drawer to use this, this concealer in particular, and gone, oh, you know what, I don't actually want to deal with the smell of that. So I think I'm grateful for my time with it. I'm very grateful that Andromeda sent it to me. It's not my perfect product. And when it comes to kind of complexion, I need it to be kind of like the perfect thing. What's the point of keeping around 20 concealers if 19 of them don't work the exact way I want them to? Hopefully I can find a, a new home for that for some uh, someone else might want to, to in my circle. And this was the other thing that Andromeda sent me. This is from Half Magic. This is their Mouth Cloud in Magic Brownie. I've used this a couple of times. It's like a very comfortable, I don't know, I don't know, like this like soft clay matte that we're doing. It reminds me a lot of the Kaleidos Lip Cloud Clab Clay, Lip Cloud, Lip Lab Cloud Clays, Cloud something like that. Uh, so I'm just, I, I really just, I feel like I haven't given this the best of goes quite yet. So I'm just going to continue playing with it. It is pretty warm. It's like a pretty warm brown. It's like pretty warm. I don't know. Like, and uh, I don't know that I love that, but I don't know that I hate it either. But I feel like right now there's so much in my testing drawer that it's just like, I feel like I haven't given this like quite the fairest of shots. What I will say also is there's a lot of other stuff in my to test drawer or testing drawer that I reach for a lot as far as lips go. And this one's getting overlooked. So that also is probably a pretty good sign that eventually this is going to part ways with me too. And then I have these two Kaja Bentos. This one is in rose water and this one just sparkles. I bought this when Kaja was having a 75% off sale on their website and I heard a lot of good things about these. Here's what I will say about the Kaja Bentos. As someone who likes beautiful sparkly wet looking eyeshadows. Have I had it? Tried indie eyeshadows. I think I would have liked these a lot and I think I would have gotten a lot of play out of them. As someone who has a lot of beautiful single indie eyeshadows, this just like misses the mark for me. It's not bad, but it's not what I'm looking for. I like, it's really pretty. I like more texture, more depth when it comes to my sheen. Every time I put them on, I think they're pretty. I never think to reach for them over my like something like my Earthborn collection shadows because I feel like in my brain this like would like occupy some more things. So I'm actually gonna get rid of this one. Danny sent me this other one. This is the colorway Hella Azalea. And so there's that topper shade. And then I think there's two mattes. Yes, there's a matte. I haven't tried this one yet and I'm gonna hold on to this one until I've tried the mattes. I'm curious about the mattes. I don't think that this is also long for my world. I just wanna try the mattes before I completely like disregard Kaja's eyeshadows. To be quite frank with you, this is just like, these aren't my colors. <laughs> I'm more fond of pink now than I once was, but like th this as like a trio is like not something that I'm going to like be running to. I would like to try the mats. Oh goodness. And everyone's favorite thing that I own <laughs> that everyone's waiting for. I'm, I promise you I'm working on the video for this. But my, the way that I have to spend my time is a little bit different. And so I, I want to keep making content, but this kind of content 
if you are not familiar with my foundation reviews, it just takes me a lot longer. There are like there's research involved. Anyway, this is a supplement of Tante. This is $135. I purchased this a while ago. As you can see, I've gotten to know it. You know, I've gotten to I've gotten to play with it. It's coming. I promise you it's coming. It's kind of a number of things, if I'm being honest with you. And this is I guess it's kind of like a, a spoiler to the, the video, is that well, I think it's a pretty foundation. It's not the foundation that I want to use. It's like almost never the foundation I want to use. Again, it doesn't mean it's not pretty. It doesn't mean it doesn't look good on my skin. It doesn't mean that it's not a good foundation. But to make content with it, I have to use it. And I put this on my face and some of you have said it looks better than my Surat. But I don't agree with you. <laughs> and it comes with this brush. I don't know, I probably should just throw this away. Like I haven't used this brush, but I'll declutter the brush. I'm gonna hold on to the foundation. Here's what I'm decluttering from this drawer. Again, I think we all need to give me a little bit of a pass there because that is my testing drawer. So these are the these two things I've happened to test enough to be like, I know I don't want these. So I'm gonna set these aside. We'll review how much stuff I declutter at the end of the video, but getting rid of these and then unfortunately I'm just I guess I'm just gonna throw this away. I don't know what to do with this this brush, but let's move on to drawer two. I apologize if the audio was, I, I'm not sure, <laughs> but my audio might have not come from the right source in the first clip. I fixed it. It's right in this clip. But again, I don't know. I won't know until I edit. <laughs> but luckily I'm recording in segments today, so. Here's everything that is in my second drawer. These are either things that I reach for a lot or single eyeshadows, glitters, etc etc so let's go with this container first i'll just move this one to the side i put on these nails for content right but it's really hard to do this kind of content with nails on these are glitters and i think it's time to give up the goat i i almost never reach for the glitters there are i think there are two i'm going to keep and this is one of the ones i'd like to keep this is mermaid seals from Slay Fire. And this is like a, I like a green, yellow, white situation. It's really pretty. So this is the kind of thing that I think makes the most impact whenever I do use the glitter. It's something like a, a white, white or a silver. So that's why I'm also keeping Chidori from Slay Fire, which is like this beautiful silver blue situation. I almost never really reach for this. It's really beautiful. This is the radioactive shade. And then Life on Mars is really my favorite glitter, but I never wear it. This doesn't have, if this had pigment to it and it wore more like an eyeshadow, the thing is the glitter, I had to press so much on for it to have full opacity and have that beautiful duochrome effect where it shifts all the colors in here. And I'm just not wearing that much glitter whenever I am wearing glitter. Whereas I can press something like this on top of a silver blue eyeshadow and it just really makes it pop. I put this on top of like round copper eyeshadows and it just like doesn't do the same thing. So I like, I would say that the way I use glitter is kind of like as an extension of a topper as opposed to like wanting full glitter, if that makes sense. And this is the shade Enigma. This is beautiful purple. It's really pretty. And this is the shade Girls, Girls, Girls from Slay Fire. This one's really pretty and I actually have quite the dent in it. It is very lovely, but I just ne never use it. I just never use them. I have friends who do drag and I think they will just get better use of the glitters, but I'm gonna keep the two that I use personally the most. And then I have some more glitters. These are from like Pat McGrath kits. So I used to be a stand of Pat McGrath. I used to buy everything that the brand put out. And so these kits were really special because it was like, oh, you can only get the kits for a limited time. Sometimes the kits come back, like she'll do like a limited re-release of them. So the only thing I'm thinking about potentially keeping, but I don't, couldn't tell you the last time I reached for it, is the Violet 007 Crystalline. Well, this feels like something that I've been more into recently, so maybe I will start using it. If I don't by the end of the year, then this is something that I can easily declutter. I have these two Danessa Myricks pigments, 
and I I do like these. I do like these. So they don't make these neon ones anymore. I'm really bummed about it. So they're not like the perfect neon pigment. My favorite place to use these is on my inner corner. Now I definitely use Rainbow, which is this pink one, more than I use the Jelly Bean, so the orange one. But they are pretty, and I do sometimes feel inspired enough to use these. But like they're not my favorite thing. I don't know. I'm not a color fix girly. Like I sometimes wonder if I had some of the nude shades, like would I use them? I don't think I would. I think I would like to try maybe, I know there's like that one really glittery one that everyone's really into. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head. I like them enough to, to keep them around. So I don't, again, I don't think they make these ones anymore. Someone told me that they were discontinued. I'm not really into water activated pigments, but there's a lot of water activated liners that are really beautiful and neon. I didn't really get enough of the pink out, but you can expect something like that. There they are on my fingers. I do have other things for neon, but that's where I normally go first. This is a gel liner that Blink was kind enough to send me in PR. And I had never tried gel eyeliner before this, and I like it. And I don't know that this is maybe the perfect formula, and I probably would, I think I might like other formulas better than this, but this is the one I have. And the thing is, it's not so bad that I feel like when I say it's not perfect, I can't put it in my waterline. And I don't know that I need it to, by the way, but I tried putting it in my waterline it got everywhere. But it stayed on my lids, which I think is like more important. Like I like to use this when I'm doing winked liner. I will reach for this before I reach for my liquid liners because I just think this is so much easier. And if you are someone who's trying to learn eyeliner wings, then I would suggest going, it doesn't have to be this one, but I would say try a potted liner. I would say that that's the way to go. These are my single eyeshadows that have their own container. So I have a couple lid lusters, I have a couple of the pop shots, and then I also have just two other, not random ones, because you can see the branding, but two other ones. Let's start with the pop shots. Again, the nails make this content hard. So I got two different shades of the hypnotizing pop shots from Charlotte Tilbury. So this is Smoky Quartz, and Smoky Quartz holds a very special place in my heart. It is perhaps my favorite Charlotte Tilbury product that I own. I tried a lot of the Charlotte Tilbury brand, so it's kind of saying something, but this shade is just, it's like my, my, my kind of, it's kind of, it's just kind of my gig, right? Just a cool toned, like taupey with a bunch of beautiful texture. I'm very into that. So like I'm safely saying that Smoky Quartz has earned its keep in my collection, but something that hasn't, this is the shade Cosmic Rocks. And this is a green, purple, blue, turquoise duochrome. And the thing is, it is really pretty, right? I just think that this kind of thing really catches a lot of people's eyes, right? You see it and you're like, oh man, that's something that's really special. I didn't need this from Charlotte Tilbury. I spent a gift card on this because I, it's not as textured as Smoky Quartz. So you can see like up at the beginning of the swatch, you can see Smoky Quartz just has a lot bigger particles to it. And I do think if this Cosmic Rocks shade had beautiful, sparkles or as many beautiful sparkles as smoky quartz i might be more into it but the thing is it's like i'm i'm not gonna choose this blue over any other blue in my collection and i don't wear a lot of blue as it is so i think that it's time for me to declutter that but i'm gonna hold on to my smoky quartz this is a single eyeshadow from phytosurgeons this is fractal freesia from their flash fluorescence collection Whenever you go on the website, if you happen to look for this, it's like you have to go to the flash fluorescence selection and it's in that. And so this is like a translucent gold topper. I mean, you can wear it on its own. It's a very beautiful, it's very shiny. It holds up pretty well on my oily lids, but I just throw it on top. Like it is see-through, but you can see when the light hits it just right. That's what's beautiful about it is that it's like, a little bit understated, but then also when the light catches it, it's like the most gorgeous, chunky, a little bit warm. It's like a little bit warm leaning glitter topper, but it's like much easier than using like a glitter like this, but it's not just glitter. It's just beautiful. It really is. I want to try more of these from Phytosurgeons. They released a new collection that has shimmers in it. This was like the only one that looked something like this with the glitter in it. 
before the most recent collection, which I don't even know what it's called. But a lot of people have said that they think I would like those. So next time I buy Verdant Force Field, I might pick up one or two of those shades. But really nice formula, really nice cream formula for eyeshadow. I don't know if I would like more pigmented versions of this, like super pigmented versions of this for myself. But as a topper, it's really, it's really beautiful. It's something that kind of goes in my brain rent free, this product, where it's like, if I need a shimmer topper and I, and I'm like wearing something that's like neutral or warm leaning, it's like, ah, fractal freesia. Of course. It's like, I don't have to think that hard about it. It's like, I just know. This is something that I can't let go of. Like, I just can't. I almost never wear it. This is the ultraviolet blue pigment from Pat McGrath. It's this blue cream eyeshadow and it's just even when I was like into super colorful makeup this is still not the shades I was using however I truly have never seen like an eyeshadow as as beautiful as this so there is beautiful shimmer in there as well especially when you blend it out you notice it more but just this is so high impact of course it stains of course it stains but I just think it's so so beautiful the thing is again it kind of I'm not wearing a lot of striking eye looks where this would be like worth my time to pull out but I can't get rid of it because it's I even think versus all of my indie shadows I just like don't have anything that can do this and so like I'm afraid to let it go but I also never use it but it doesn't disappoint me I really like it and like I I love it for like if I'm going out like and I don't go out that often for a concert or something it's just like nice to be like oh yes my old friend but I would say if I wear it twice a year, it's a lot. And this is like pretty old, but it's still, it still works. It still works. It's a little dry. It's a little dry. Let me smell it. It doesn't smell bad. It doesn't smell turned. So I'm keeping it. I'm sorry. They, it's not sentimental. Like I said, I do, I do have like weird feelings about the brand Pat McGrath having been a stand and then just being very disappointed about like where the brand has headed the last couple of years. So but this is like, this is what I wish we saw more from Pat McGrath. Like this. I want luxury this. You know, if I want if I want Pat McGrath, like that's, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I used to look for at Pat McGrath. But now Pat McGrath doesn't do that anymore. So I have two lid lusters from Victoria Beckham. I think it's very safe to say that these aren't going anywhere. But I'll show them to you and I'll swatch them for you. This is mink. And this of the two is my favorite. So it looks just brown in the pan, especially on camera. In person, you can see the silver. But then when you swatch it, it's there on my ring finger, you see this, these, this cool tone overtake it. And uh, I love that. So it's like, this is the more intense version of Smoky Quartz. Now I've layered them before. They're, they're beautiful together. They're beautiful on their own. But Mink, if I had to choose, like if, if, let's say I was like really trying to be a minimalist, I wouldn't need Smoky Quartz and Mink. I would just keep Mink because Mink I can blend out a little bit and just kind of make it a one and done. But the thing to know about Mink before you jump into it is that it does have this cool cool toned shift so it reads more as a taupe than a brown than it I think initially seems and I think it's something that in the marketing for Victoria Beckham it's like it's easy to miss and so I think a lot of people think that this one's going to be the easiest most neutral one for them to wear and it's not it's it's a very it's a very beautiful cool it's like it's very special now do these wear on my eyes all day no I would say four to five hours is like wear these kind of cap out for me. So I like to wear them if I'm going out at night, going out for dinner or something. But I do think if you put a powder eyeshadow underneath them, especially if you have oily eyelids like I do, it it holds up a little better. So I do an eye look all over the eyes first. And then when I'm, I put this on the lids, there's just already something underneath it to kind of grab onto. But very beautiful. And then I also have Onyx. So this one's pretty straightforward. It's a, it's a black with some silver in it. <laughs> I didn't get this big of a swatch. It's really pretty. It's, you know, it's not too specific, but it's like the, I would say if you're really into like an easy smoky eye, like if you wanted to explore smoky eyes in a real way and you're just like a sparkly smoky eye, if you're a little afraid of using black and building out your own look and you just want to smear something on the eye, this is kind of that girl. That's kind of what Onyx is. It doesn't get the most play. Like I, like I said, I love Mink so much more than I love Onyx, but they're very beautiful. I would love to try more shades. These are expensive, right? So I 
I would have to be discerning if I explored any more shades from the lid lusters, but I would like to try more of them. Again, I have to be very considerate about which ones I buy because I want to make sure I'm buying ones that I'm going to use a lot, which I didn't do with the hypnotizing pop shots where I bought the blue one, where if I had just zoomed out for a second and thought a little bit more about how much blue I actually wear, wouldn't be worthwhile. Next up, I have a smoky eye brick from Victoria Beckham. My mirror fell out. So here's the thing. I like these eyeshadows. I think they're pretty. I think they're nice quality. I think they're really beautiful on textured eyelids. Uh, they hold up really well on my oily eyelids. They're really great. They're just kind of boring, right? Like it's just kind of like, it's a very specific clientele. Now, I, in theory, really should declutter this, but I do, I, I would say it's, you know, I wear it more than this thing from Pat McGrath and I certainly wear it more than Cosmic Rocks, right? So it like gets its use. And I particularly like wearing this one with mink like there's an eye look i like to do with these particular products but the reason i like hes hesitate to get rid of it is because of this big shade right here it's really pretty and it's pretty interesting and this is the colorway tweed i believe yeah this is the tweed smoky eye brick this shade i really like this shade it's like a sequin shade but it's this beautiful camel that has a little bit of like a, a gold shimmer in it I just really like the way it looks on my eyes and I have green eyes so putting something this warm toned on my eye like with these reds and that camel it looks really good on my eyes and so I can't give up the goat you know I mean not that this is not the goat but I can't give up is that the phrase give up the goat give up the goat is that what we say the goat is the greatest of all time what's you give up the good give up the good What's the new that we give up? I'm gonna hold on to that one. That's something that I could see myself declaring by the end of the year. Two, the Victoria Beckham Sony Eye Brick. And then I have two of the Rowan quads. I have 1111 and I have 52 degrees. And I like, these I view as one and dones because these don't really hold up that well on my eyes, but I like the way they look. And I like that you can just kind of tap them out. I feel like people with drier eyelids have better luck with these. And I did like a full review of these. They're just like, they're really easy to use. These are the kind of eyeshadows I reach for, for daytime. Like, um, and I know that not all of them are like really like daytime shades. I like, I don't know. I like the idea that you can just kind of smear these on your eyes and they look so good. And they have that beautiful, they all have beautiful texture. Now in the 1111 quad, my favorite shade is the top left one situation I think is what it's called it has the most texture in it it like really butters my biscuit and there's like blue sparkles in there it's really pretty I really like it I like the 1111 more than I like the 52 degrees but I in this formula I did have also the whatever the warm one is and it just didn't do it for me like the way that these two did but in my opinion 1111 is the like the better of the the options. If I were to buy one again, it would be 1111. But I just love that these like creamy, waxy eyeshadows are just like really easy to throw on. And I could put them on a look, but they do kind of destroy the powder eyeshadow. Whereas powder eyeshadow makes the Victoria Beckham ones last longer in my experience. I find that with the Rowan shades, if you put too much on on top or underneath them, it makes them wear worse. Just like a very thin layer of whatever shade you are looking to use is like the best way to go. But I do like these and I, I, that's like, they're not something I use on my channel quite so much. They're, they're not, I mean, they're beautiful, but they're not impactful enough where I feel like they read really well on camera. But in real life, if you're doing something subtle and you just want to look like smoky and cool and I, you know, I think that these are really good for that. This acrylic container is finished. I'm going to put everything back. Here's what I'm getting rid of from that container, but we'll come back to those when we are done decluttering this container, which I'm just going to keep off screen and I will pull things in as I want. These are the powders I use. I keep them in this drawer, not because it's like makes the most sense for them to go there. I think they would make more sense in my like foundation drawer. However, I use these all the time. And sometimes I'm not going all the way down into my foundation drawer for the foundation because I might be using something in my testing drawer. So I like to keep these higher up in my drawers and oftentimes they just don't even make their way back into my drawer. But I have the Shantakai Perfect Blur Powder. If you do purchase this nowadays, it doesn't come in this. This was limited edition packaging because this was a limited edition product. They now make it in regular packaging, but you can see that I've done some work on it 
I do want to try a different blurring powder when I'm done with this. I want to try the Sisley blur powder situation. This is the shade Light Medium. Now, they, they did at one point make a deeper shade, but I haven't, when I have been linking this, I haven't been seeing the other shades. I don't know if they stopped making it, which is like weird move, Jean de Guy, but also I have two of the Charlotte Tilbury powders. Like I said, I do think Smoky Quartz is the winner, but these powders are really beautiful. I probably won't buy them when I'm done with them, but this this one I use just on my under eyes, the brightening one. I just use it on my under eyes and like in the center of my face, and then I use this on the rest of my face. If any of you have tried alternatives to the Charlotte Tilbury, you know me, I do prefer high-end, but even at the drugstore, whatever... Whatever you feel like is the closest consistency that gets you the, the, you know, a similar look, a similar blur, a similar finish to the Charlotte Tilbury powder, I would love to know. But these are the powders that I'm working on. Okay, these are a couple Charlotte Tilbury quads. I keep them in this drawer because they just make more sense, right? In my eyeshadow drawer with my big eyeshadows rolling around, they're going to get lost in sauce. So this is the a luxury of pops palette and really the shade that i like the most is this one unlike the other blues that i've shown you this has like a blackened base which really does it some favors <laughs> and i really love a very easy smoky eye so throwing that on and just blending it out is like a good smoky eye for me that really does it for me it just is like my it's like one of my favorite shades of eyeshadow and then i, I also like this one too I really like these pops. It's, it's very sheer. This one is more of like a topper shade. I don't care for these two bronzes, but I like the other two shades enough to continue like holding on to this. It's not the most economical, I know. And then I also have one of her regular quads in the Uptown Girl. I think it's really, a lot of brands do not go this gray and a lot of Charlotte Tilbury's products do not look like this. A lot of them are so warm, so pink. So I appreciate that she has something in her collection like this. I would like to see her explore things outside of warm nudes, warm pinky nudes. Like I wish she would do that a little bit more because she's really good at it. I'm not like going out of my way to buy Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows, although so far it does seem that way. But this is the last of the Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palettes you'll see from me. I like this, if especially if I'm using a cool tone something else, like if I'm using an indie eyeshadow, I like, I can build something with this and then just use this. But I also like the pop in here and I prefer, I really like these. It's like, she makes good products, but is it luxury? I don't think so. But do I like it enough to keep it kicking in my collection? I do like it. I do like it that much. I declutter this once. I'm actually going to declutter it again. I never use it. And I do think that it's I think it's time to get rid of it now because I do have that gel liner from Blink that I got. The reason I pulled this back out is because I wanted to do a black liner and I didn't want to I didn't want to use a liquid and I didn't want to use a pencil. So I was like, ugh. So I pulled it out of my declutter bin. But now it's gone. It probably should be thrown away. It's pretty old. It kind of smells. So I'm decluttering this, but it's being disposed of. This uh was a glitter. <laughs> it's called Whoop from Lit Cosmetics. It's pretty. Uh, kind of the same thing goes for this that went for all of my other glitters that I decluttered. Just not that I don't love glitter. I do love glitter. But if I'm using shimmer, this is not the way that I'm like using shimmer. And I think that this was like a limited edition color. It was like I bought so many glitters and I got this one free. I was buying them for my friend and I was like, I'm going to keep the free one. I should have just given it to him. I don't know why I kept it. Like I should have just given it to him. I was like, maybe I will be a glitter girly. But I do actually really like lit glitters they're they're really nice but what I would also say is that it's very selective there's one shade that I might buy again from them that I, I would consider because it's really really pretty I believe it's called vitamin c it is so pretty it's the one that I got my friend who I bought more of the lit glitters for hooked on and I bought him two of those they're so good they're so pretty he does drag so he goes through glitter much faster than me and then they also I also have this adhesive from Lit, I'm just gonna pass that on too because I don't, I don't really particularly need it. I have other adhesives I can use. This is from Lemonhead LA, and this is a nice topper. This is their Space Paste in Houdini, so you can see. I don't know, can you see how big the dip is? It's like almost to the bottom. <laughs> like this, I've used so much of this. I really like this, and Beyonce used one of these on the the Netflix special. But <laughs> it was Coachella, Beachella. 
I really like this and it's really pretty because it's it when it lays certain directions you can't see it at all that's why it's called Houdini and then the light catches it and you get that beautiful purple so it's like yeah this makes perfect sense because I like to use my glitters more as a topper to like enhance as opposed to like being the entire star. I've been holding on to these Silly George lashes for so long. I've worn them. I'm not a lash person. I'm just gonna throw them away. Like I don't, I don't need them. It's time to give it up. These are the mascaras that are not currently in my testing drawer. Long time viewers on my channel know. Is that distracting you? Is that bothering you? If you are familiar with the channel, I normally try to keep one, one open. But then I got, I have some in my testing drawer. Like I have one from Makeup Forever. I have one from Surat, which I don't like having it. The thing is, having this many mascaras open is so wasteful. And I do not recommend you as a consumer of makeup to have more than one mascara open at one time. Unless you layer mascaras and you like know which two mascaras you like to layer. Cool. I think that's fine. Really, you should only have one mascara going at any time. After three months, you replace it. Now, at that point, if you want to try a new mascara, you can. I would probably just be buying the YSL Lash Clash if I weren't on YouTube. But now I'm in a position where I'm like reviewing makeup. So sometimes I have more mascaras than I would like. So let's just, let's get into it because I don't want to have this many mascaras in my thing. This is from, I don't know, December. I don't know why I still have it. I haven't worn it in some time. This is the Blink to be mascara it was nice i like my eyelashes to look like i have eyelashes on you know what i mean and so like this is like really good for someone who's looking for something natural something that's really easy to take off at the end of the day because it is a tubing formula i liked it well enough but it's also been open since december so it's it's gotta go it's it's time is done this chanel this is the the volume to chanel i really like this but it's been open for a few months i've used it enough times it's a mascara that i might buy in the future if i'm feeling spicy you know, like if I'm feeling like I don't want to buy Lash Clash because I feel like Lash Clash and this appear pretty similar. And the thing is, the Lash Clash has been a little bit transferring on me recently these days. I don't know if I bought a full tube of this, if I would like it more than the Lash Clash, but they're like kind of similar. This has a really weird applicator. It's like a, well, it's not weird. It's like a, but it's a thick rubber applicator with a really, really, really short bristles. It's pretty wild looking, but it, it's really good at separating my lashes. And then the Lash Clash, which is, you know, what I was just comparing it to, has like one of those really big natural fiber wands. I said this in another video, but in case you missed it, I love the Lash Clash. And yeah, I've said that seven times in this video in particular. In the summertime when it's humid and it's muggy out. Do you guys say that? Is that a Pittsburgh thing? Do you guys say muggy? Let me know in the comments down below. Is that a thing? It might be a Pittsburgh thing. Now I'm saying it. It's like how we say some people in Pittsburgh. I don't say buggy, but like, you know, like a cart at the grocery store. People here call that buggy. I, again, I don't know. Let me know if you say muggy. <laughs> now I'm self-conscious about it. This will transfer because it makes my lashes so beautiful and so long that it touches above my brow bone. Now, if I had eyebrows, probably wouldn't notice, but I don't have eyebrows on my face. I shave them off. And so it transferred. Listen to me. So I brought back, this is new. I just re I repurchased this. This is the Tartlet Tubing Mascara, which is like such a wild thing. Like me buying a Tartan mascara doesn't make any sense. This feels more luxe. It looks more luxe than holding this. I just gotta let you know that the experience of holding these two things, this is a better experience to hold. Now YSL does have like this beautiful custom packaging, but this is plastic. And I think this might be glass. Like it might be painted glass because it's like very heavy. This is a really dramatic tubing mascara it's beautiful and it makes your lashes so long and volumized and this look this tart one looks more like false lashes than this the ysl lash clash not having used them back to back i do i will hold on to this 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 lash clash is it's at its expiration date i do want to do an, an upcoming let's play with makeup i want to put one on eye and one on the other i do think that perhaps the tartlet tubing mascara reigns supreme for me and it might be the best option for me in the summertime because with the tubing formula it's not really transferring because it has f made that tube the weird thing is though it's a tubing mascara and the blink one comes off in tubes the tart lip this tube this tart one has never come off my eyelashes in the tubes but it performs like a tubing mascara so it's interesting it's really interesting but it is really good and i'm excited to have it so after i do that let's play with makeup i will declutter the lash clash but i need to do that first but as soon as that's over, it, this is, it's time to go. These are the eyeshadow primers I use. Blink sent this to me when they sent me the gel eyeliner they sent me, as well as they also, just for 
transparency blink also sent me the tubing mascara they sent me a couple things they you know paid me to review it which was pretty cool anyway so i have the next glitter primer and i also have the blink eyeshadow primer both are very good I, they both do what I need them to do. I liked the Too Faced one, but I haven't used it in some time. And like this one serves its purpose. And these take me so long to go through that it's like, it's just like, it'll likely go bad before I need another one. And it's like $6.50. I don't know that I would need a luxury glitter primer either. Like this feels like more like a utilitarian thing. And it's like, you don't see a lot of drugstore on my channel. So like, this is what I use for glitter. A shimmer that will break down on my eye easily. Normally the next glitter primer will hold it better. But the Blink one is really good for satins and mattes exclusively. Like I've worked out for 45 minutes on my Peloton and my eyeshadow held up through that. It's really nice. I It's not the only eyeshadow primer that's done that. The Too Faced Shadow Insurance has also done that. My my beloved Air Atelier also did that. I miss it. That brand is no longer with us. And the thing was the other day, because this is see-through. Now that not a lot of eyeshadow primers come in a see-through container. I... I'm working my way through this pretty quickly. Like there's not that much product. Not that there's not much product, but I can see holes, which is nice. It's nice to be able to see that, which is one thing I will say for the blink. But I do, if I recall correctly, there was less product in this than the Too Faced Shadow Insurance, which I did declutter when I got this because I liked them both and some people weren't happy that I bought <laughs> some Too Faced eyeshadow insurance. I don't know. It was a thing and I was like, fine, I'll just hold on to the blink one. Here's a random assortment of things. I just got rid of the lashes. This is their adhesive. Now. I am maybe planning to depot some things and I might need this to glue some pans into other things. So I'm going to hold on to this, but I will declutter it after I use it for the purposes that I just mentioned. But I, now that I don't have the lashes and I don't have any more lashes and I don't plan on buying any more lashes, I'm good on this. It will go. But until, but, but after I use it for what I need it for. Here are all my lip and eyeliners. So I think let's start with eyeliners. The Victoria Beckham Satin Eye Cajals are really where it's at. So I have three of the shades here. This is the shade Ash, which I would say is more a soft black than very gray. Like it's like a soft black. It's really beautiful. I love it. I also have Coco, which is a beautiful brown. It's, I would say it's like, I think, I think it's like a little more warm than neutral, but it's really, really pretty and I adore it. And then I also have sequin green, which needs to be sharpened, but that's what that one looks like. That one has shimmer in it. So that's those. I'm keeping all three of them. I like them. And then I have two Colfi shades and one Pat McGrath shade. This is Blitz Blue from Pat McGrath. It's old. It's old. It doesn't not work. I don't really wear blue eyeliner. Now, it's not something that's out of the realm of possibility. I have, because of the satin cajol liners, I have been more into eyeliner recently. I don't dislike Pat McGrath's liner formula, but I find that the Victoria Beckham ones work the way that I like eyeliner to work, which I didn't know beforehand. I find that the Victoria Beckham ones, like, give me time to smudge them out, and they're bulletproof. The Pat McGrath ones are bulletproof. Really hold up very well in the waterline, and they're really good for graphic liner, too. Like, I've done some graphic liner looks with this blue, and they've always looked really pretty. It's from 2019. I bought it in 2019 when I was in Chicago. I don't like this formula as much as, like, so if I bought, if I wanted to do blue, I would buy a satin cajol from Victoria Beckham if I'm just being honest. I'm going to declutter this. I would, it's like, it's old, so I'm not going to pass it on to a friend. It just has to go. So now we're left with two Colfi eyeliners. They did send these to me in PR back in the day. This is the shade Rain Check. It is a beautiful turquoise. Really pretty. I like this formula better than I like the Pat McGrath one. These stay all day. They also give you some time to smudge them out. They're, they're really good for graphic liner. They're like, I have no complaints about these. Other than I prefer a sharpening pencil as opposed to a twist up pencil. I know that there are people who have the exact opposite opinion from me. And what I just said about blue eyeliner is true also of Kofi, even though I like their formula better, but I, it's like, I, st I, don't, I still don't reach for this that often. This one's newish. It got it last year. I think if I sanitize it and give it to a friend, they can get a lot of use out of it. Tiger Queen, which I use all of the time. <laughs> well, which I used to use a lot and I have admittedly used less and it did 
did this, which doesn't really bother me, but you can see versus the compote, you know what I mean? Like that's how much product's in there. This particular eyeliner shade, I haven't seen elsewhere, which it looks orange on camera right now, but it's more of like this beautiful terracotta. And when I want to wear warm eyeshadow looks, and do a little bit of a wing. This is this is it. This is it. This is it. So I'm gonna keep Tiger Queen because it's just like a beautiful, it's like a it's just a beautiful shade of eyeliner that feels like entirely unique. And I love that. Kind of like with eyeliner, I didn't know I liked lip liners until I tried a good lip liner, which I guess I thought I had more from Pat McGrath. But this is the shade Buff. To me, these are really, these are really dry and they don't like to smudge. And I like to be able to smudge my eyeliner and like this just doesn't want to do that. It's also, I mean, it's from 2020, so it's like not as old as the blue eyeliner I was still holding on to, but it's still not a fresh chicken. And I think it's just time for it to go. But I will still hold on to my other three lip liners. Now, this lip liner is very specific. It's She's Hard to Get from Patrick Ta. I also have the lipstick and not that the lipstick, I mean, I don't know. It's a very specific thing to hold on to, but... I wear the lipstick sometimes and I will pull out the lip liner whenever I use the lipstick. So I think it's just good to have on hand. And then from Victoria Beckham, I have the lip definer in five, which I use a lot. I wear a lot of brown lipsticks. So having a brown lip liner makes a lot of sense for me. The thing that's different between this one and the Pat McGrath one is that this one blends out with my finger whenever, you know, whenever I've decided that I'm want to blend it out. Do I think anyone needs a Victoria Beckham lip liner. I do not. You do not need a Victoria Beckham lip liner. But I bought it to do a brand review and I like it enough to keep it. But again, it's not like I have a ton of lip liners. I had four at the start of this. I'm going to go down to three. This is the Lip Cheat from Charlotte Tilbury. This is another very good Charlotte Tilbury product. I know some people love this. Some people hate these. This is the shade Hollywood Honey. I wish I got a different shade because I don't use this shade as much because I'm much more into like neutral brown lipsticks as opposed to it's like almost red. It's like a, you know, it's kind of like a mahogany shade, I would say. It's not honey. Like I thought it was going to be like a yellow brown, but it turns out to be like this red brown. It's whatever. It's, it doesn't really matter. These are really beautifully creamy, much creamier, like maybe the creamiest lip liner I've ever used, which is going to be a pro to some people and not a pro to other. And with my lip liners, I feel the same way. I do prefer a sharpening pencil, a sharpening pencil as opposed to a uh twist up twist down and then i don't have any other makeup in here i just kind of have tools this is almost gone this is from auric this is their what do they call these ritual plush ritual this is just the original formula here's the thing i like this i would never wear this anywhere but on my channel i didn't lose the jade it's like sitting somewhere else i didn't like that i didn't like it so then i just resorted to using my fingers <laughs> Which is fine. That was my choice. But they do have the jade to make it more sanitary. But here's the thing. If I use it and then just throw it back in there I, and without sanitizing the jade, maybe the jade has some kind of like self-sanitizing properties. I do not know. I am not a stone person. This gave me the white ring of death every time I used it. So if I use it as my lip balm during the day, that would do that to my lips, which I hate. I don't like lip products that do that. And beyond that, it's just a lip balm. So I sometimes with a gloss, if the gloss is pretty enough, I can look past the white ring of death because it's like pretty for the first, you know, 30 to 45 minutes before I need to like remove it and then reapply it. That doesn't sit well with me with this. So I won't buy this again. I think I'm going to try one of the make lip balms. And I think that might be better because it is thinner. I might feel more compelled to use it. And I like a doe foot applicator balm. There's a, the balm that I have like the most, I hate that I'm about to tell you this. I don't like the brand Huda. I don't, I don't fuck with Huda. <laughs> like, that's like a brand I really care for. I know I talked about a Huda product earlier, but that was like sent to me by a friend. I don't fuck with Huda. I just don't, I don't do it. When I used to work at Sephora in gratis, they sent me, they sent us the liquid lip balm from, and I, it's like my favorite lip balm I've ever used. I also really like the one from, God, that, that skincare brand for children, <laughs> Mario Badescu. That one's really nice too. And I liked it, but I, I hate that it comes out of that squeezy tube. No squeezy tubes for me. So I, yeah, I think I'm going to try the Make Serum Lip Balm. I think that's the thing. They also have like a thicker one. I don't know which one I'm going to try, but I'm going to try one of those next. As opposed to this. I'm almost done with this though. I'm going to pan it before I buy it. Well, I might buy it soon and then pan this and then start using that. So yeah, that's going to stick around. So yeah, nose shaver for whenever I need to touch up. I, don't, I have all these tools that I never use, but they're good to have on hand. This is my 
liner sharpener. So just to put everything back in here. That's that one all set. And so here is what I'm getting rid of. So let me count one. I'm getting rid of 16 things and then I'm throwing away five items and then I'm gonna try to find homes for the wrist. Okay, let's move on to drawer three. This is everything I have in drawer three. So this is my lip products, complexion products, kind of some also odds and ends. We'll start with complexion since there's less of it. I, like, I don't I don't really know where to start. I have quite a few primers. This is the Auric Glow Lust. It's kind of a multi-use product. I don't like view it specifically as a primer, but it some people use it as a primer. It's just a nice and glowy situation, right? Like it's, it's a liquid highlight at its core. That's what it is, but you can do so many things with it. And it's just like this really beautiful thing. And it's like one of my favorite things that I own makeup wise. It's absolutely not going anywhere. Just a really beautiful component. Like that's so pretty. <laughs> Look at how pretty that is. So I'm not getting rid of it. I'm not, I mean, I'm not not getting rid of it because of how pretty the packaging is, but it's like the whole experience of it is very luxe. I really like it. I have two of the Victoria Beckham Cell Rejuvenating Primers. I have the regular and then I also have it in golden, which is more of like a, a bronzy situation. It doesn't really deepen my skin too much, but I know people who use it as a skin, like a, a product deepener. But to me, it reminds me of, I had De Bronzy by Drunk Elephant, and it kind of reminds me of the finish of that. Like, it's not really doing anything, but it is doing a little bit of something. <laughs> That's what I feel about it. These are my favorite primers, so I won't be <laughs> getting rid of these anytime soon. The golden one is new to my collection. I just bought it this past month, and I have been using the regular one for some time, and I gotta say, I'm never, I'm never looking back. These are really it for me, so of course I'm going to be keeping them. They're very expensive, it's like one of those things where it's just like, I recommend it if it's something that you would like to buy, but I also know that like that's like pretty, it's like steep. But I also have this, and this is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. So I would say that this is my favorite primer before I got my hands on the Victoria Beckham primer, and I bought this. So what happened was I ran out, I finished a bottle of this, which I don't finish a lot of makeup. I did finish a container of this and I loved it. I really like it. It's my favorite thing to test new foundations with because I feel like this really sets it up for success. I also feel like the Victoria Beckham does it. I will say though, probably for testing purposes, the Bobbi Brown one is a little bit better. While I do think that it does enhance the way your skin looks a little bit, it's not as much as the Victoria Beckham. And so I always think this is a really good thing to test foundations with because it just makes your skin ready for foundation, but it doesn't like do anything before your foundation can. But it's just, it's a really beautiful product. It has a lovely scent to it. I'm going to keep this around. I would like to finish this. Like, you know, I bought it, but it is nice. But if for some reason Tiffany were to like run out of primer, and they were like, I'm going to buy primer. I would probably just give them this, like whatever I have left of this so that they can use it because they would probably use it faster than I will. I really like this primer. I have no complaints about it. I think that the hype around it is very real. I think it's just like a no fuss, beautiful, preps your skin kind of primer. It's not like the thing that's going to hold your makeup in place all day. Like it does have some gripping qualities to it, but it's just more or less it's like it's going to make your skin feel really nice, plump it up just a little bit. So whenever you're putting makeup on it, it just applies really beautifully. Ritual the Fee, on two separate occasions, has sent me their thorn oil. So this was, they sent me this one last year, so it's getting kind of old. So I like to have an oil primer on hand because sometimes you get a foundation that like, it needs something that isn't like a cream moisturizer. I often say like my Merit Perfecting Complexion Stick didn't really appeal to me until I started using it with like this, this particular product. And then Merit came out with the Great Skin Serum and I feel like very similarly about it. I really like this product. It's one of those things that like, I don't know, like it, I've always would have wondered about it if Ritual Defeat had never sent it to me, but I also don't know that I would have ever bought it. 
you know, because it's it's a crapshoot. I have oily skin, and while I do love products that are designed for people with dry skin a lot of the times, I was, like, concerned that this was going to be too much. So I found that it, the way I like it best as a primer is I just do three drops. The back of the packaging, the packaging recommends, like, six drops at the minimum. I know I don't, that's, like, not what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do, my plan is, since I have a brand new one, and I do, I want to have one on hand, I'm going to use the one that's mostly used up as skincare. So I'm going to move it upstairs and then I'm going to keep my full one in my makeup drawer. I'm not like 100 super percent committed to the, the super goop brand. The thing, <laughs> I needed sunscreen and I just was like, I know that people like it. The Unseen Sunscreen reminds me of Invisibler from Murad, if you've ever tried it and you haven't tried the Unseen Sunscreen. I'm a little bit behind. I've never tried Super Goop before, even though I was selling it at Sephora all the time. I like kind of knew nothing about it. I'm glad I got the Unseen Sunscreen instead of the Glow Screen, which I think I would like the Glow Screen, you know, under makeup and whatever. I think this is nice. It doesn't give me any issues pilling or anything like that with stuff on top of it. If I put my makeup on right after this, I would pref I just kind of use this as my primer as opposed to like adding a second primer but I really like it it's been worked out for me so far and I have yet to use the body one because I haven't really been outside too much this summer maybe I'll have an occasion for this I thought Beyonce was going to be the occasion for it but she canceled her Pittsburgh show so cool this is going to be a really disappointing category because I'm not getting rid of anything so here's all my complexion products right now that sounds like a lie because it kind of is I this, there's a Surratt Dewdrop foundation that I'm keeping with the Surratt stuff. So I remember to include it whenever I finally do my Surratt video that I include it. But the Surratt Dewdrop foundation is not new to me. It's something that I've used for years and it is my favorite foundation. So we can just assume that that's not going anywhere. The, this is my only color corrector. This is the green color corrector from Chanel. I don't think it's worth your money to purchase this. It's fine, but there's no experience to it. And part of What's important about luxury to me is the experience of using it. I think the product inside is like fine. It's like, you know, it's a beautiful product. It does what it's supposed to, but I don't think that 30 plus dollars, I don't know, 40, I think this is like $45. It doesn't feel like something that cost me $45, where something like the Auric Glow Lust feels like it could cost 60 some dollars. But the Chanel one d doesn't, if that makes sense. Like, I just I don't understand. I've also been testing the green color corrector from Makeup Forever, and I kind of like that more. I don't think that they serve the same purpose, so I'll continue holding on to this. The thing is, I always forget to use it. Unless my skin's really red, then I'm like, oh yeah, I have a green color corrector. But this is never at the top of my mind. I haven't found this to be particularly, I don't know. I mean, it does what it's supposed to, but it's like not particularly exciting for me to use. And I like to be excited by my products. And I'm sure there's a green color corrector out there that would. Now, I've heard good things about the green color corrector from this line. So this is from Givenchy. This is the Prism Libre Skin Caring Concealer. I have the shade N95. I gave this concealer a little bit of flack when it first came out because everyone was talking about it like it was the best thing. And the thing is, it's really good. And I it like, might it be the best concealer I've ever tried? I think it is. You know, I think it's a very good concealer. You get a lot of product in it. I just have trouble whenever everyone's hyping something up to really like jump on a bandwagon. It's just like not really what I, I like to do. And I'm not saying that everyone else who was doing it was doing it to like jump on a trend or jump on like a hype train. I don't think that that's true at all. That's why it took me a long time to like really come around to this, but it's a beautiful concealer. I decluttered another concealer in order to keep this in my in place. I like wearing it all over the face as a foundation. It's like, a, it's, a, it's a really beautiful complexion product. And I, I, it's just like, it's, I have no complaints about it. It's really good. I'm happy that I have it. I'm happy that I bought it whenever there was all the hype. This is the Merit Perfecting Complexion Stick. So that's the thing. I never know which side is the side I'm supposed to open. I've heard that the new packaging makes it a little more clear. So I have the shade Silk. I love this product. I feel like it's a little bit controversial. Like I think some people either love it or I hate it. People with dry skin think it's too dry. I also, whenever I first applied it, wasn't really sure about it. It's This is like one of those products, like kind of the opposite of love at first sight. This product took me some work and then I really liked it. In fact, sometimes I watch my old content just to, you know, see how I was speaking. You know, like just like, I don't know. It's just something that I like to do on the occasion. I often will be like, whoa, what am I wearing on my skin? And it's normally this whenever I'm looking at those videos. I can normally tell when I'm wearing the Surratt it's like sometimes 
like this is like covers a little bit more because I wear it all over my face. It's supposed to be like this multi-use. It could be a concealer. It could be a foundation. I just wear it as a foundation. This is the old packaging. It has less product in it. Now it has 1.7 times the amount of product that was in here in this. I'm almost done with it. And then Khaki said she was sending me the one that she has my way and it's in the same shade. So I'm excited to get that because I would be bummed if I didn't have it. The thing is, this has lasted through quite a few different foundations. I try to only keep my foundations to four. This is my concealer. I try to keep my concealers to one, but I try to keep my like foundations to, to four. So I have two right now. So this has, this is one of my, I guess it's like kind of my top two foundations right now. I'm sure there are other foundations that I would like more than this that I just haven't gotten my hands on yet. But yeah, this really works out for me. The way it blends, I don't know. I just like everything about it. Like the, the shade works for me really well. It's a really good shade match. Took a while for me to feel that way about it. But now that I know how I like to use it, it's like a product that I find pretty foolproof for myself. That's it for complexion. Let me rearrange everything and then we will come back with lip products. So we didn't lose any complexion products, but that's okay because it's not like this was like an overwhelming thing. And also two of these things is just sunscreen. I'm okay with the way that this shook out. Let's start with liquid lipsticks. I think this is all the liquid lipsticks I have. I could be wrong. I might find one throughout. It's not even like I have that many lipsticks. So let's start with the Fenty one. I'm fairly certain this Fenty one has turned. It's kind of like separated. I used it all, not all that long ago. And I like thought it smelled weird. It, I thought it smelled weird. It's a really pretty color. This is the shade uh, Unattached, which I'm not sure. Like, I don't know what's going on with the, the lipsticks from Fenty, but... I know they launched a new liquid lip formula that isn't this formula because this is like older. Also, the reason that this never gets used and it truly doesn't ever get used is because the packaging doesn't fit in my acrylic thing. And so it just kind of floats in the drawer next to my foundations and I just like don't think about it. But I think this needs to be thrown away. I just don't, I don't, I, I couldn't pass this on to someone in good conscience. Tiffany passed it on to me, so I think it's time to go. I... I wouldn't be opposed to like finding a, a beautiful bright coral shade for myself. Unfortunately, that Fendi one is just not very good anymore. Then I have Dropout from Sugar Pill, and this is green. It's one that it's just like Trinket if you're familiar with the formulas from Sugar Pill, where it has like a sparkle inside of it, and once it dries down, if you like run your finger over the product, the gold will start to come through. I love this. <laughs> it's not my favorite lipstick formula, but I love the color. Like, I love the green. I don't need it to be sparkly, but I love the grungy green. And I'm much more into bullet lipsticks, but, like, I wear a lot of grungy greens, and I think it looks really good on the lips. I kind of love a swamp lip. Like, I kind of like it. It still smells good. It still performs okay. Again, it's, like, not even my favorite liquid lipstick formula, but I, I just like the color. I don't wear it the most, right? It's not the most wearable color for me. There are some people obviously who will wear this every day and like that's like their favorite lipstick color and I think that's really cool. Unfortunately that's like not where I'm at in my lipstick journey so it's like not something I reach for consistently but it is something that I appreciate having the option to wear when I'm in the mood for it. And then I have these two lipsticks from Kaleidos. I have Golden Rosin and I have Echo Valley. Echo Valley is a super, a sleeper superstar. So I don't wear a lot of liquid lipsticks, but sometimes I, when I go out, I don't want to have to like retouch my lipstick. Like if I'm going out for drinks and like not eating, something like this formula is like really good for that. I would say this about the Lip Lab Cloud Clays from Clydes. I think I got that right. Is that they're an interesting formula. They're really silicone-y and they kind of keep that silicone quality while you, the whole time you're wearing them. So they feel really comfortable unless you don't like silicone lip products and that won't feel comfortable to you that won't feel good I think that this is just a, a really it's a really stellar formula it's interesting it doesn't I feel like it almost doesn't set all the way but it doesn't really transfer but I wouldn't say that's also transfer proof like it says it doesn't have the feeling of what I remember liquid lipsticks being in like 2016 whereas dropout feels more like that kind of feeling these are really really great they're really, really great like they're comfortable they they have good longevity the thing is I wish that Kleidos was easier to get right because I think I would in, in theory potentially like buy more of these I'm keeping these by the way I like the formula a lot I get a lot of value out of them I think they're great I wear Echo Valley like so often there's so often where that's just the lip because it's like I don't have to think about it too much I am a little bit disappointed in golden rosin so this is this beautiful murky gross kind of orange color that has like a lot of yellow to it kind of baby poop 
color, you know, like a baby poop. And on my lips, it just reads as a very beautiful orange. And like with no none of the grunge, <laughs> it just like wears as orange. And it's really pretty. It's not why I bought it though. I wanted it to feel more like this on my lips, but I'm guessing like the undertone of my lips maybe messed with it a little bit and it just turns into just regular orange, which is like a pretty big bummer. There is a shade similar to this called Cider from Black Moon. And I haven't tried their liquid lipsticks. I have one of their regular bullet lipsticks. That might be something I try down the line, but I'm I'm impressed with these. I would I would like I recommend them to you if you have never tried them and you've been curious about them. They're really good. Again, it's really just hard to justify. I like I don't love all of Kaleidos products. You know, like I think they're most I think most of them are just okay. I think this is like one of the more standout products from them. To buy one lipstick would cost you like ten dollars shipping if you live in the U.S. and it's just like. Okay, so now it's like a $24 lipstick. It doesn't feel really worth it, you know? So that's the one bummer about it. But I do like their lip products. I think they're really great. Let me get my other oranges out since Golden Rosin's right there. And I say that it reads a little bit more orange. This one from Bobbi Brown is Atomic Orange. And it is just, it is like, as described, a vibrant orange. If this formula had like a coral like that, which it might, the these are Lux lip colors from Bobbi Brown, I would buy it. <laughs> I would buy it. Like, I like this formula. I think it's really comfortable. I just, you know, I'm not wearing orange like this a lot, but I like having it. I do wear it sometimes and I really like it because it people, I get so many compliments when I wear it. I always kind of start with my eyeshadow and I have to know when I'm doing my eyeshadow if this is where we're landing. So I might have to start pulling this out and being like, that's what we're using today. We're going to make that the star of the show. It's a really comfortable formula. It's it's not like, you know, forever lasting. It's just one of those very comfortable, lustrous, beautiful, like luxury lipsticks. And I, I, I don't know, I'm sure I'd probably even love nudes from this line, but I don't feel like I want to run out and buy them because I have so many beautiful lipsticks like this. I don't need other shades in this formula at this time, but I do think it's a lovely formula. And then this is from Givenchy. This is their, this is Brick. And this is in their sheer velvet matte formula or something like that. Something sheer velvet. And this is in the shade Brick. And this was a shade that came out last year. It's interesting because they call it a Brick Red. It's certainly orange. But as you can see, like, these are kind of close. Not exactly, but whenever I put both of them on my lips, they kind of read the same. This is just a little bit lighter, but they, like, it. this reads more like an orange than this does. But sometimes I'll put this on my lips and it does feel like it looks like a brick red. This lipstick formula is phenomenal and I wouldn't hesitate to recommend like if you were interested in trying Givenchy. It's an awesome lipstick color and it's not something I pull out all of the time but it's always something that I'm glad to have and I'm sure in the fall because I, I wore this a lot in the fall of last year. Probably will wear it a lot again in the fall of this year. The only thing about Givenchy lipsticks is their packaging is really weird. So this stud, these studs on both sides are like what you have to hold on to then lift up the product. It's really cool packaging and it's a really great formula. So I'm not departing ways. I promise you that I'm going to declare something. Let's just get to it because I knew I, this is one of those things where I kept seeing it in my drawer and I was like, I don't want that anymore. This is from Victoria Beckham. This is the Posh, posh Lipstick. Yeah, Posh Lipstick. It's, that's one of the things I hate about it. This is in the shade spice. Wow, it swatches really bad. I, in theory, like this packaging. It's nice and weighted. It's very small. It's like very slim. Like it's very slim compared to other lipstick packaging. Problem I have is it's hard to open. So I just have, like, it was hard to open without nails. It's hard to open with nails. If you have dexterity issues, I think this is gonna be really hard. There's not much for you to grip on this side. Like it only goes to here. So you need to grip this with kind of like the edge of your fingers. But something I commend them for is it's hard to open. So if you throw this in your purse, you're pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that this wouldn't. There's no magnetic closure. It does snap. Finally, besides the packaging, I don't think it's that impressive of a lipstick formula. I think it's fine, but I wouldn't go out of my way. I wouldn't go out of my way to buy a posh lipstick. So unless there was like a shade that you couldn't find elsewhere. But it's like a, a nice, a nice and lustrous, but it's not super pigmented. There's like a lot of things that I should like it. Like I think those are good qualities in the lipstick because we're going to come up on some lipsticks that have similar qualities, but I just, I'm like, I'm not wowed by it. And so I just am never going to use it. So I'm just going to declutter it. Similar products. I have two lipsticks from Merit in their signature lip. I have 1990 and I have Slip. 1990, I mean, I guess, I mean, if you're new here, 
It's my one of my favorite lipstick shades. I also really like this formula. The problem lies in that my experience with 1990 and my experience with slip are very different. So 1990 is still in pristine condition. This is what my slip looks like. All chewed up, hits the side. It's not great. It's not great. I like the shade. It's like um, it's like a, a light yellowy warm brown. I don't reach for slip because I, I know how messed up it is. But I like the formula and I would wear it more. But there's a mental block where I just like, I, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to use that because like it's so gross. This packaging, if you've ever interacted with it, it looks really bad on camera, right? It doesn't, but in person, it's like an entirely different experience. It's nice and luxe, heavy. This formula is just kind of like a, a lick, like a lipstick balm. <laughs> it's a, so there is pigment to it, but it's not so light where you can just like not pay too much attention to it. But it's it's not so much like a lipstick where you have to pay like a lot, a lot of attention. Do you know? It's like, it's, it's, it's like lies in between. So what I'm going to do, because I love 1990 so much, I'm going to keep it. Like, I like this. I also have heard that the the problem with the lipstick hitting the side of the bullet is a quality that the lighter shades have, but I had to pass on this. Hopefully I can find someone because it's, it's not even really that used. It just looks like I've been chewing on it. So maybe I can find someone who is like going to look past that, but unfortunately <laughs> I'm not the one who can look past it. I have a couple Pat McGrath lipsticks. So this is the shade Omi and it is like a pinky nude and I used to like this shade a lot more until I got more into browns and every time I've gone to use this it hasn't like worked with the looks that I've been putting together and it's an older it's like an older lipstick I think this is like from holiday 2019 maybe I bought it when we were in lockdown but it was marked down because it came as a set with flesh three I, I just don't think that that's a lip color I'm very interested in wearing so I think it's time for this to potentially go in the bin. I don't feel comfortable passing it on because it's it's a little bit old. I would still use it, but I don't feel comfortable passing it on. I also have Flesh 3, which wears as like a, a nice red on me. It looks like a, I don't even know what to call that color, <laughs> but like a dark mauve, I guess, which I guess is what it is because they came as a set and like you can kind of layer them and like use the... Omi as a highlighter shade in the center of your lip. I wear this one apparently more. Like, I feel like more of the bullet has been used of this one. I really like it. It's not something I think about often, but whenever I do use it, I'm very satisfied with it. And I normally get a ton of compliments when I wear this one. I still think Omi is a great lipstick color. And if you're into that kind of thing, I think the Pat McGrath matte formula is pretty good. It's not like my favorite lipstick formula, but it, I think it's like a quality lipstick formula. I like it better than Charlotte Tilbury's matte lipstick. So like, I do think it like is a luxury lipstick, but it's like also, are you, do you want to pay that much? It's up to you. You know, those are all questions that you have to answer on your own. I'll keep flesh three. It'll stay in rotation. And then I have, what is the shade? Full blooded, which is going to be very funny because I've just talked so much crap on my Instagram about berries. So this is like a black, black and berry shade. It's funny because I remember when I did my using all my makeup in December of 2020, Two, one. Was that how long ago that was? Yes, it was. So December of 2021, I did this project where I was like using all my makeup. And I remember putting this on and like loving it the couple times I got through my lipsticks. And I was really excited to always use it again. The thing is, I feel like on my lips, it doesn't really read as a, a berry tone. I can't say that I've reached for it since my last declutter. And so for that reason alone, I think it's time to like part ways with it. And apparently at one point I was into berries because I had thought that that was really cool. Because I feel like it reads more red on my lips. I almost kind of want to give it like one more. I know I'm not wearing it. So I just can, I'm going to get rid of it. This is from Sugar Pill. It is the shade Gravity. And much like my feelings about this Pat McGrath shade that I've already forgotten the name of. I have not used this since my last declutter. And to me, that just means it's time to part ways with it. It's the, the formula. So I actually really like their bullet lipstick formula. It's really comfortable. It's not like, you know, forever wear, but it is just, it's also like, a, it's really pretty. And I also much like this other shade when I did that project where I was trying all my makeup, I remember really enjoying wearing it. But I, again, I think it's a testament to just like what I'm into as far as lips go right now. I'm really living in this 
realm, this brown realm, as opposed to like this pinkier realm. Like I still have, you know, flesh three if I'm going to go into this realm, but I think that I can part ways with gravity and I'll be just fine and I don't think I'll miss it. This is from Black Moon Cosmetics. This is their Satin Bullet Lipstick and I have the shade Omen. It's a beautiful, comfortable, wonderful, fully pigmented, neutral black lipstick. It doesn't pull green or blue or purple. It's just black and it's very lovely. I don't wear it all of the time, but I'm happy that I have it and I always love it when I do wear it. It makes me feel pretty badass. This is from Patrick Ta. This is the She's Hard to Get. I think it's what it's called. She's Hard to Get. And it's a vibrant pink. Now, this is not always my, my jam, but it's one of those shades where, kind of like Atomic Orange, whenever I want to wear it, I'm like really happy to have it. In fact, someone recently tagged me in a post that they bought this lipstick shade because they saw it on me. And I thought that was very fun. This lipstick formula is actually very comfortable. It's a really nice lipstick formula. I think it's really great. I wish he would expand on the line a little bit because like, you know, there's only so many shades that he released. I would love to see like more fleshed out nudes because there is like an orange and I think there is like a brown shade. I haven't revisited the brown shade from this line since I got really into brown lipstick. So I might even like that shade more now that I'm like into this kind of thing. It's a great lipstick. It's a great color. It's a great color if you're into like hot pink. Okay, so now we're kind of getting into like some of my favorite lipsticks. This is the Natasha Denona. I need a nude in Noah. So I would say that this is like my baby poop yellow brown of my dreams, which I kind of think I thought golden rosin might end up being. It's almost like the warm version of Echo Valley. I like that. The formula is okay. I like this color. This color is why I like it so much. And I do think it is a nice formula. It's just like, it's not my favorite lipstick formula. I also have MAC Whirl, which is, you know, classic 90s brown. It has more pink in it, but it's not quite as dark as Flesh 3. It kind of lives in like an in-between space, and I really, I really like it. I don't know. I think this is just the regular matte. It's not the retro matte. I think the matte formula from MAC is pretty good. I think that MAC has like a bad rap. I think we forget that they have really good staple products and that's probably why they stay in business. But like their fun release, quote unquote fun releases, their like limited edition stuff is just pretty bad. This is my second to last bullet lipstick. This is A Royal Scandal by Gucci, which you can see that I have really took into that like we're almost at the logo, which is you know, quite the feat for a lipstick in my collection. Another baby poop brown color, and I love it. I don't know that I'm 100% sold that, like, the Gucci formula is, like, my favorite lipstick formula. It's good. The thing about Gucci is they have a lot of shades that are very nuanced and a little off the wall. <laughs> and I think that, like, this is that. It has, like, green in it. Gray, green, brown. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, baby poop color. But they also have a black shade. They also have green and blue. They have a bunch of bright shades. It's very interesting as well as like, you know, nude shades and pinks and whatever and classic reds, you know. But like the thing about luxury lipsticks is that you can always find like something that's a little bit off. This is from Hourglass. This is their Red Zero lipstick. And this has their vegan carmine in it. So it's supposed to be a true red, not too blue not too, like orange it's just supposed to be right down the middle I don't know what the status of their true red pigment is the whole idea of them formulating it was so that they could sell it to brands so that they could stop using carmine because carmine is like pressed up beetles in case you didn't know which I'm not trying to vilify carmine by the way but I think it's pretty cool that this could if like brands wanted to go vegan that this pigment could make it more possible because I know that, you know, there are people who are very staunch about having their products be vegan and I guess cruelty free. I don't know. It's like, you know, I, I know this isn't really the place to have that conversation, but like, I also don't want people to lose their jobs because, you know, there's, you know, people do this for a living uh, with the carmine. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is and I'm not here to like tell you what the right answer is, but I think it's cool that Hourglass did that. Now I have lip glosses. I'm not gonna swatch these. I'm just gonna walk you through them. This is Love Potion from Pat McGrath. Listen, some of these Pat McGrath shades, I don't know that they are still 
in play or still in existence. I feel like the glosses got overhauled one time and then there was like only seven shades left. I like I don't know what happened. Like I don't I don't know what happened. But Love Potion, I will keep. This is Peach Perversion from Pat McGrath. Again, I will keep. It's really it's, you know, it's really pretty gloss. Pat McGrath glosses aren't my favorite. I have a new favorite since we are at that point. So I have this is Flesh Fantasy. And I also have this is tan line. So they're not the same shade. They're not at all. But on the lips, they kind of serve the same purpose. They are nude lip glosses. <laughs> this one's more pink. This one's more brown. If you've been paying attention, you can tell that I like a brown lip shade. The Victoria Beckham lip gloss is far superior to the Pat McGrath one. And the Pat McGrath one used to be the one that I thought was the best. I don't get the White Ring of Death with Victoria Beckham. I do get it with Pat McGrath. Like I said earlier, it's not going to always stop me from using the Pat McGrath ones, but it's just something I have to be weary of when I'm using them. Since these kind of serve the same purpose, and I also like the packaging of the, the posh glosses better. You know, like everything about the experience on the side of the video here is just much better than the Pat McGrath. It's, Pat McGrath is in plastic, the Victoria Beckham is in glass, and there's no sticker. You know what I mean? Like it's just like I'm gonna pass on this. It's probably time to throw it away, if I'm being quite honest. Since we just talked about that the posh gloss is my favorite formula, I also have it in ice, which is just a clear gloss. So sometimes I like to use that as a topper. And then this is Feature Femme from Pat McGrath. I will keep that because it's really pretty. And this is from Merit. They sent this to me in PR. This is the Falcon lip oil. It is a brown lip oil. So you might be thinking to yourself, what a perfect product for Tom. I don't think I'm sold on lip oils, everyone. I don't think I get it. I think I like a gloss. I like the thicker. I like it thicker. I like it thick. I like a thick product. I like a thicker lip gloss. Not lip gloss. I just don't like lip oils. The thing is, with something that's pigmented, and this could have been my fault too, I picked a deep shade because I was like, I love brown. But the pigment, because it's in an oil, just kind of like moves around my face, <laughs> which I don't love. Uh, not my favorite thing. So the, this is just not my favorite thing. I'm just going to pass on it. I didn't find it like that particularly nourishing either. Like, I don't know, like it, everything I felt like what I've been promised a lip oil could be. And I also have heard in my comments that Merit lip oils are not where it's at. But I just don't know. I just, I'm, I have this instinct in me. I'm not going to buy a lip oil because I just don't think I'm a lip oil person. And it's not 100% because of this. I just think it's, I just don't think it's for me. I don't like the idea of having something that I feel like is going to move all around my face and not go stay in place. Like I like a gloss when I put it on, like stay in place and... This isn't, this didn't do that. The pigment got all over me. And I know I could get a lip oil that's clear, but I still, again, don't think that's the answer. I just don't think that lip oils are for me. So I'm going to pass on this. I've only used it a couple of times. It's pretty. I like it uh, the way it looks when I first apply it. I just don't like the way it just wears. I don't like it at all. Here are the lip products I'm keeping. Look at, I could have bought one that was this big. I didn't know. There was a time where I thought that this was going to be something that I wanted to be full. But I have how many lip products? Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I have eighteen lip products, and I think that's even a lot for one person. But especially for a YouTuber, look at me. I mean, I don't know. I don't know that I need like you know. I like what I like, and that might also change. And when I when it changes, I'll follow that. But I'm not gonna, you know, throw out all my browns because I'm still gonna like wearing those too. It's just you know, it is what it is. I got invited to dinner since I started recording this, so I'm hoping that I can get these lip products off my arms. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to take some micellar water to it. Well, let me show you what I'm getting rid of from my lip collection. I'm getting rid of eight, which I think is, you know, pretty respectable. And then I'm going to throw away these ones because they're just older. But I think that I can pass on these ones. Hopefully I can find someone who wants slip. Let's move on to drawer four. This is my fourth drawer. Everything in this drawer is cheek product. So bronzers, highlight, contour, blushes. So let's kind of tackle this one thing at a time. I think bronzers will probably be the simplest thing to start out with. I also threw a contour or my contours in here. So we'll start with those. This is just, what's in this pink in here? This is a powder contour from Kevin Kwan. And I'm just kind of like holding on to this 
you know, I don't, I normally cream contour. Every now and then I want to go over top of it. Uh, this Lucky Strike container was a gift from one of my subscribers, Amy. The only thing about it is like the magnet's not incredibly strong, so it's not something I could like travel with, but it, it just, I love having it in my makeup drawer. It's so cool. I also have this cream contour from Fenty. This I'm basically calling done. So I'm doing a cream contour video where I'm trying a bunch of stuff to replace this. So I'm kind of holding onto it. There's still enough product in there to be able to like swatch it against other things. So that's kind kind of why I'm keeping it but it's not it's like it's not really part of my collection I'm not really I'm not reaching for this anymore it's kind of been called on it and then here are the three bronzers that I have that are considered in my makeup collection I have a couple of bronzers right now in my testing drawer and we'll have to make some decisions when push comes to shove there but I do have the Chanel bronzer healthy glow bronzer in Soleil deep tan there's some remnant stains from <laughs> the lipstick so that's the Soleil Deep Tan, and this is my only cream bronzer right now. So, uh, I mean, I guess I'm testing some cream contours that look more like cream bronzers. That's my only cream bronzer that I consider to be mine. So I'm going to hold on to it. I really like this formula. I like the scent of it. I like the way it makes my skin look. I just have to be careful with it. The thing is, they make a couple different shades of this now, finally. The lightest shade I didn't care for, and I like the undertones of this one better. I just have to make sure I'm using the right brushes. Etc. When I'm applying this, so I'm not over applying it, but I, I do occasionally over apply it. It just happens, you know. Sometimes I just get carried away with my bronzer a little bit. Then I have two powder bronzers. I have Tom Ford's Terra. That's what that one looks like. This is the oldest bronzer in my collection, and there's actually starting to be a little bit of a dip in it now, which it took a really long time to get there. The thing I love about this is the undertone. It's pretty neutral, and it works really well on my skin tone. It feels like a bronzer that Unlike the Chanel, this one feels a little more foolproof. I can kind of like put it on, put it on, put it on, and like nothing really terrible happens. And it doesn't make my skin look too crazy orange or bronzed or anything like that, which I really like it. Now, they don't make this size anymore. This is like the jumbo size, but they still make this product. They used to have two shades. It seems like they only sell Terra. I don't know. It's Tom Ford. If They're terrible at shades, but I think this is a really lovely formula. I, I think that if you, if someone with like a skin tone like mine was looking for a bronzer that's really easy to use i think this is like a nice bronzer i wouldn't buy it oh, like if i were to recommend one to you i probably would recommend the victoria beckham which is less ex it's still not cheap but it's less expensive than the tom ford one and you get like the two contour shades it'd be a matter of figuring out which shade duo you would like and also there's more options in the victoria beckham as far as shades go I really like this. I, I, it's like kind of my, not, I don't know. I want to hit pan on it. Like that's kind of my, my goal. So I'm, I'm keeping this around, but I keep thinking ahead a little bit. So I have two bronzers that Surratt sent me and I really like them and I think I want to keep them, but it does feel like that's a lot of bronzer for me as someone who, I, I don't know, I don't run through bronzer. Like I had a bronzer for six years that I like wasn't even that close to hitting pan on that I was like, I'm just kind of sick of using it. So I don't want to have too many to rotate through because what will happen is I'll just keep picking one, but I, I like all of them. So let's talk about the Victoria Beckham bronzer. It has, this is the shade light, so it has the two. Obviously, I wish it was this darker shade. That's what I consider to be the bronzer. They call it like the sculpting shade. So this lighter shade is like designed to be tapped at the high points of your face to bronze there without it being like, too dark and then darker shades supposed to be more for sculpting. Here's what I really like about this. This is a really great bronzer for the winter for me. So I haven't been using it much in the summertime just because of it's pretty fair. It's pretty light. It's one of those bronzers where you like put it on and you're like, wait, did that any do anything? And then when you finish putting it on, you're like, oh, my skin looks so much better. Kind of what I wanted the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer to do. I wanted that to do the same thing that I feel like this does, but only in a cream, but I didn't feel like it did anything. I feel like this really does something for me. But in the summertime, when I'm looking to be more bronzed, I'm either using this or the Chanel bronzer. So whenever the fall rolls back around, I'll get into this more. And I still, I still use it. And thankfully, Khaki has come up with a technique uh, where uh, she blends her concealer into her blush with this shade right here. So like underneath the eye a little bit. And it's a beautiful blurring powder. And you can use it in the eyes. I don't really do that much, but it's really pretty. I really like it. I like the packaging. I like that it's refillable. So whenever I'm done, I could just buy a refill. Or I, I have considered in the past buying the next shade deeper 
to actually use in the summertime but with the way that my channel is headed I think that's a bit of a mistake because now I have two new bronzers from Surat that I really enjoy so I didn't make any progress here these are all sticking around again this one doesn't really count the Fendi one but yeah nothing to really declutter here but I also don't feel like I have too much of this particular category at this time to really feel like I need to make it a hard call Here are my blushes. Let me get them open. This is actually a category in my makeup collection that I feel like I have pretty under control, but I do, I have some cuts to make. I have some cuts I would like to make. So something that's definitely not going to go, this is from Kaleidos. This is, I actually don't remember the name of this, and I think mine's missing like the sticker on the back. So this is one of their powder blushes, and it's in that like, like Dior pink shade that got really popular in the last year or two and I didn't think I was gonna like this shade of blush but I bought this for review whenever I reviewed the brand Kaleidos and I really like this it's a really great blush formula it's like not really fussy it's 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 just really nice and it I feel like I couldn't really overdo it like I'm sure I could if I really spent time trying to but this blush is very nice for me it really works out for me I really enjoy using it I like this color, which I wasn't expecting. Whenever I was doing the review, I bought this because it was like, well, this is a good time for me to try it because I wasn't buying it for myself per se. I was buying it specifically to review on my channel. And then I fell in love with the color. And I was like, well, I guess I'm this kind of person now. So I'm gonna keep this. I also like the packaging. Kaleidos is like, their packaging is pretty good for the brand being the cost that it is. So I have a couple orange blushes. So, I mean, I guess this isn't really orange, but I have a cream orange and I also have a powder orange. This is Smolder from Fido Surgeons. I really like Fido Surgeons' Skin Spark formula. I find them very intuitive once you put them on the skin and definitely use this shade a lot less than I use the other Fido Surgeons shade that I have. But I really like it. Considering where I've come as far as like orange blushes go, I think it's okay for me to have a cream version of it and then also a powder version. So I'm going to hold on to that. So this is the Kiss of a Copper bronzer from Bare Minerals. This was the first of the bronzers that I ever tried and I really like this formula. I understand the hype. I understand why everyone like kind of lost their mind over this formula. It's really beautiful. The only thing that about some of them, specifically the deeper shade, especially if you have a lighter skin tone, you just kind of have to be careful about how much you get on your skin. <laughs> because it's not like it's hard to blend, but like if you overdo it, then it's not as beautiful. So I use a fan brush whenever I use this shade in particular. But it was the first bronzer I had. I fell in love with the formula and I still bust it out all the time. So this is a yellow blush. This is the shade Wasp from Ritual Defeat. And it's in their balm nectar balm formula i don't use this very often and it's from 2020 let me give it a sniff it still smells okay so the thing is i just like never use it while i do like doing artistic looks occasionally i just don't think i do it enough to warrant like holding on to something like this if one of my friends will take it can, like if I mean, it's gross just because it's a balm a lot of stuff gets stuck in there and also it's kind of like tinted from my foundation I'll definitely like let one of my friends have it if they want to but I think it's time for me to like give up on this I also don't really like love the balm formula I don't think I love a balmy blush I like something with like a little more pigment a little more heft and this blends out nice it's like pretty but it's just like it's like not my gig when it comes to, to blush if I'm being quite honest with you Want something with like a little more tenacity than this this was really fun when i did use it and i think i think it is pretty this is from hourglass it is the shade at night and it is like a brick red blush it doesn't really look like that when you swatch it on the cheeks it reads like kind of like a sunburned red i haven't reached for this since my last declutter and we're you know we're into summer and it's just like not what i'm vibing really with at this point and it's a beautiful blush and i think that someone else probably will get a lot of use out of it i still stand by that i think that the hourglass blushes are the easiest blushes to use right if you have if you have trouble with powder blushes and you have not tried the hourglass blushes i think it's worth giving a shot that 
creaminess to it, like so that cream sheet really makes it easy to apply to your skin because it feels like I say brick red, but then you see this and you're like, that's not that scary. It's really hard to overdo it. And I think that's what they're nice. But you know, I think I am skilled enough to handle a regular blush. So I'm just going to pass that on to someone who will love it more than me. I, this is new to my collection. This is the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow in the Coral Shade. Here's something just to know. This pisses me off. It's not see-through. The blush is a different color on the inside. So there was a time where I had, I had the House Labs Coral Blush. I forget what it was actually called. And I compared the two. They were Pomelo Peach was the name of the House Labs Blush. I compared them quite a bit. And the Dior one was more blurring and made my skin look a lot better than the House Labs one. And the House Labs one was good. And I liked it and I appreciated my time with it. But this one ended up winning. And this was some, I had purchased Pomelo Peach and then one of my fellow reviewers, Majestic Beast, sent me this one because she didn't like it. And it really kind of bothered me that this one won. But I will tell you this, I've heard since they launched the new shades that the formula on this isn't as good. So buyer beware. I just want to let you know, like, so I have been really enjoying this, but I'm, that makes me weary to like, suggest this to you with like if the formula has changed it's not been performing as well on people but I'm fairly certain this is the original formula because I got this before they launched the new shades so I would say make sure I would tr swatch it in person see if they can if if one of the like artists at Sephora can just like apply it to your cheek so you can see what it looks like but that one's sticking around for me so then I have this one from Pat McGrath it is the shade electric bloom and it's really pretty it's a really pretty bright coral and it's like the deeper sister to the shade i just put this is obviously much better for my skin than this and but it happens every now and then where i just want to use this for blush draping but i don't do a lot of blush draping looks so this is one of those ones, I haven't used it since my last, and that's not true. I have used it since my last declutter. I'm conflicted about this one because sometimes I like feel like it's like languishing in my collection, but I really like it. And I don't like, I'm not as like thrilled with these blushes as I feel like everyone else is. Like, I think they're pretty, I think they're nice, but it's just like my qualms with the brand Pat McGrath keep me from like fully committing to something. And I really, really like something, like I haven't had, any, had anything from the brand blow me away in quite some time. Like these are nice and I think there are some beautiful shades in it and we'll talk about this one in a moment. Maybe maybe this one will survive another declutter and if I don't use it, I think I, I don't know, I feel like I'm in a phase where I'm about to be into like a lot of quarrels so I, like, I'm like hesitant on this one. So I'm just going, I'm just, I'm gonna keep it for now. I might change my mind by before we're even done with this video whether or not that one gets to stay. As of now, I'm keeping it. So these are all of my, what I consider to be like beigey blushes, <laughs> but they're all kind of, nuanced and different. So Mimi from West Metelier, this was my first foray into beige blushes. I love the packaging of the West Metelier blushes. They're really beautiful. They're nice and weighted. They feel as expensive as they are. So like that's pretty nice. But Mimi on their website is kind of advertised well, it's called a warm tawny beige, and it looks like this dead pink on their website. But in in reality, it is more of a like a warm beige. It has some like just like it has a lot of warmth to it, which I don't feel like you see in their imagery on their website. But it didn't stop me from loving it. Like I've said this before, like relatively recently on my channel, I was like, this isn't the shade that I thought it was, but it is is a shade that I fell in love with, and I'm really glad that I have it. So I'm going to be keeping that. Then my second foray really into a beigey blush was this from Kier Weiss. This is their Inner Glow. It's right there on my ring finger. I'm going to swatch it right next to Mimi so you can see the difference. So it's a lot lighter, but it also has a sheen on top of it. It's like a silver sheen and it's definitely much more cool tone. It is much more a reality of like the dead pink that I was in search of whenever I was buying these two. It feels like much more of a hint and when you're applying inner glow on your cheeks you're like oh my god like it just feels really intuitive. I mean I, I feel the same way about Mimi but like inner glow for me and like my skin tone it's just like jarring like what it does it's just like oh wow and it's like this no fuss but it kind of is the blush that if I don't know what blush I'm going to wear, whether I'm doing warm tones or cool tones for my look, this is like the blush that I reach for because I'm like, well, 
it doesn't ever fail me. And like, I don't know if you can see the divot in here, but like, I really like this. And I will say like this packaging is really beautiful and like luxe and fun to interact with. And I really like that. So that's another thing that like sometimes packaging does matter to me where I'm like, okay, I do want to hold that in my hands. And I think that's why you see such a divot in this is because I, I use it a lot because I think about it a lot because I like interacting with it. And so that, it's like one of the things that it has going for it. This is one of the other Phytosurgeon Skin Sparks. This is the shade Condensate and I'll swatch it here. I would say it's like the much cooler tone version of Mimi. It's kind of like Inner Glow, but has more purple into it. It also doesn't have any kind of sheen like Inner Glow does. So all of these feel really intuitive on my face. I feel like also with Mimi and also with Condensate, I can kind of use them with whatever I want. It's interesting. I was waiting for that to happen. nailed down. Well, not nailed down, but nailed dirty. Love this formula. I think that Phytosurgeon's cream formula is one of the best cream formulas of blush, and I can't recommend it enough. But I, you, I feel like whenever you see this in the pan, you're like, uh, is it too purple? Is it too cool toned? No, it sits right at home on the skin. I also think people who might be afraid of cool toned blushes and wanted to like dip a toe in, I think that the toasted blushes from Phytosurgeons are a good place to start because they have enough nuance in, in them where they feel like they feel very comfortable. They feel very like at home at one on your skin. Assuming you buy the one that's like good for the depth of skin that you have. This is Kiss of Pink. I got this sent to me from a subscriber. And at first, whenever you hear Kiss of Pink, you're like, oh, it's going to be like too pink. It is more pink than the other shades, but it still is in this like beige arena, which I'm very into. It's also like a little bit warm. Uh, kind of almost looks coral next to all of the other ones. But this is the kind of blush that just like the other three, we're going to throw it on with kind of whatever. And it always looks good. And so I think... It just earns its keep in my collection. So this is Ray from Chantikai. I spent a lot of time talking about it in a recent video. I wear it mostly as a blush. Some people wear it as a bronzer. Some people just like put it on their cheek and like that's their cheek product. And it can also be an eyeshadow. I think, well, so you have to keep in mind when you pick it up with a brush, it doesn't pick up like that. Definitely is more orange on my skin, but I've seen it pull more rosy on other people's skin. And whenever I put it on my cheeks, I feel like you see the rosiness. It's just a really beautiful product. It's definitely something that I like to wear with something a little bit warmer. It's not as universal as the other four shades, but it is really special. It just is a special little, like whatever you use it for, it's a very special version of that thing. And I, I'm not letting go of that. And then I have Desert Orchid from Pat McGrath. I would say of the blush release from Pat McGrath, of the three shades that I tried, this one is the best one. <laughs> I didn't know I was like on my way to beige world whenever it came to blushes. So this kind of just like looks tan. It kind of looks like nothing. And even when I swatch it, it kind of looks like my skin tone on the middle finger. And then I put it on my skin and it like it, like, it picks up a little bit of warmth. It gives you just, like, what I call, like, the je ne sais quoi. It really does not. I don't use it as much as I use, like, the other ones. In fact, I feel like the Shantakai one is, like, the more amped up version of Desert Orchid. But I really think that Desert Orchid is really special. I think if you have a fair skin tone, it's, like, worth exploring. Especially if you want to go a little bit warm without going, like, incredibly orange. I feel like that Desert Orchid is really where you should head. It's, it's, it's really nice. It's like just my favorite, like one of my favorite colors of blush. I think there's something about like, you know, my constant problem with Pat McGrath products is like the way that I had, like the way I feel about the brand in general is just like, I'm just disappointed with the brand at this time. So I think whenever I open my blush drawer at one time, seeing this packaging would have been like, oh yes, of course I'm going to use my Pat McGrath. Nowadays I'm like, ugh. I don't know that I want to use my Pat McGrath. I think that Desert Orchid specifically gets overlooked because it is a beautiful blush and I do know that in my head. It gets overlooked a lot. Electric Bloom is just, it's more of the shade than it is the Pat McGrath of it all. But like I said, if I'm, I have all these beigey blushes and like, I like them all, but then like Desert Orchid is the one I definitely use the least of them. It's disappointing, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it for now. So let me bring out all of my blushes. I have 11 blushes. 
I don't think that's that bad. And then I got rid of two. Here are all of my highlighters. I obviously really like the Ritual Defeat formula. I have quite a few of them. I had more. I used to have more. And then I have some other things. So I think how I want to start this is I'm going to pull the things that I use the most and discuss them. <laughs> so these are the five highlighters that I feel like I use the most. I also use Auric Glow Lust quite a bit. So this is, uh, this is really old. This is the Tarte Skin Twinkle Volume 2. This, they don't make this anymore. I bought this when I worked at Sephora and one of the Tarte brand reps was wearing this. And when I asked, I saw her from across the room. And when I say I saw her from across the room, it wasn't, it's not like 2016 blinding highlight. It just like looked like the best and most natural highlight I've ever seen. And so when I asked her what she was wearing, she kind of pointed to these two shades. She kind of like said, I bounce around between, oh wow, that highlight is trying to pop out. This is old. This is really old. You can see like cracking in them. In the two shades that I use, this shade right here has so much use. There's like, you can see so much pan around the side. This one is used, but not as used as the one on the far left. They're really beautiful highlighters. <laughs> they really are. I, they, like, the thing is, they don't swatch super well. And I've, I really don't have a need for these two on the end. But I, I really like these two. So, like, whenever I swatch them with my finger, they look super joggy. But whenever I use a very soft brush on my cheek, they really are just like the softest and most natural highlight. I don't ever get rid of this because I reach for them. I reach for them quite a bit. I, I, I don't know, Tarte's not a brand that I'm like super into and I like think super highly of or anything like that. But it is, this just is something that I like, I don't know, I really like. I, just can't, I, don't, I can't get over it. I just really like it. Another discontinued product. A lot of my highlighter is discontinued. <laughs> it's not, not doing great. This is the Milk makeup flex highlight in the shade lit i don't know why they don't make these powders it's like one of the it's man it's like a wet looking beautiful champagne highlighter i had to be a little bit careful with this highlight because it could leave a cast if i build it up too much but again much like the tarte highlighters the brush that i use definitely matters as far as this goes and i also like Using a fan brush is like the best way to apply it, but I use a little bit of a denser brush than that because I like a little bit more highlight whenever I'm doing highlight. But I think this is really beautiful because I can either do like a very intense highlight with it if I'm really feeling that, or I can do something really subtle and soft and glowy and I like the versatility of it. The thing is, it's like, it's, I think a lot about highlighter because it used to be like my favorite category of product. Sure, I used to have even more highlighters. I, I know this is a lot of highlighters, but I used to have even more than this. It seems like whenever I was into them, I like bought the right ones because they stand the test of time. A lot of people recommend me try the Rare Beauty one, but I think that I would probably like it. But it's like, would I like it any more than what I have? And I think that the answer is like, no, because I like what I have. I don't know. It's like, it's weird. I feel very like satisfied with my highlighters at this point. And that's not to say there might be a highlighter that comes along that like wows me. We'll then go on to this one. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand. It's Spotlight. And... If you know, you know, I've given this product a lot of flack. Uh, and when I first got it, I said, it's not worth the hype. And I do believe that. This is not something that I feel like anyone needs to go out of their way to buy. It's really beautiful. And I really, when I did my Charlotte Tilbury brand review, I like was like, don't buy this. It's just fine. There is something to it. There is something to it. It's really convenient. It's easy to use. It works on top of powder. It works underneath powder. It's like very easy and versatile to use and it's a nice shade kind of it's like more a little more warm it's like a slightly warm leaning neutral so i find that works with most of the looks that i put together without thinking about it and that's kind of like the deal with these highlighters so those are, tend to be my favorite kind of shades and so i have been using it quite a bit i don't really love that i feel that way about it but i do i do I did squirt a little bit too much out of the component. Like, the component sucks. I don't think that this is where we need to, like, draw the line in uh, highlighter. Liquid highlighter could be in not this packaging. Anyway, uh, but Charlotte Tilbury did it first, so it's her fault. She's annoying. I can't believe she did that to us, but I do like that product quite a bit. Then I have two rare light luminizers from Ritual Defeat. 
Rachel Diffie has two highlighter formulas. Well, I guess technically three, but, but the Rare Light Luminizer is the kind that doesn't have sparkle. It's just like a natural glow. This is Moon Pillar and this is Phosphine. They are, Moon Pillar is like the purpley one and Phosphine is the more like champagne -y one. And basically if I'm using, like if I'm doing a cool tone look, I will pull out uh, moon pillar and if I'm doing a warm tone look I will use phosphine. They both are a little bit duochromatic. They look like they're gonna be really intense until you get them on the skin and they read much more naturally than you think they're going to. So yeah there certainly is like a little bit of a purple in moon pillar but it's not like overwhelming. It's that it's not like something that's like slapping you in your face and this this soft glow kind of highlight is definitely like where I'm living in a highlighter right now as opposed to stuff that's like really over the top and sparkly which I do love on occasion now but that used to be like my go-to for a highlighter. I am kind of moved the sparkle and texture all into my eye and that's kind of where I prefer my texture to go as opposed to on my cheek but you know every now and then like a look calls for it and it calls for it you know it's fun to wear on camera it's just not 100% always what I'm running to so I'm going to keep all of the ones I just showed you okay I'm retiring this one this is an old Pat McGrath holiday release and the reason I'm retiring it is because I well I, I could pass it on to someone if they wanted it. It's this, it's supposed to be like a rose gold. Is that what it's called? Champagne gold. And in a finger swatch, it looks like more of a something than it does on the cheek. Here's the thing. I never reach for this <laughs> as far as highlighter goes. But this is really heavy and super luxe. And I'm going to keep it because it was a gift from a friend. And I wouldn't have bought this myself. And I just, I like kind of having this around. It's like, it's like a reminder of Pam McGrath past <laughs> to me. But it's like, I do never use it as a highlighter. So I don't think there's any point of me keeping it in my drawer. So I'm, I'm just kind of like moving that. But it's not going to be a makeup item that I use really anymore. And they don't sell that anymore. So it's not like it really matters, you know, to know really much more information about how it wears. I have much more Ritual to Feed, but we'll, we'll save that for... The tail end there. So I have this. This is the Fenty Diamond Balm in How Many Carrots? And you may be wondering to yourself, isn't there supposed to be a glitter overlay situation? And there was. Now I ripped the top part off and it would never just stay back on. And I could have super glued it. And now I'm realizing as I'm trying to open this is that that is what had the grip. If I didn't have nails, I don't think this would be as much of an issue, but I, you know, I'm now wearing press on. There we go. So this is just like a very shiny, wet looking highlighter. It's one of those things where the girls who get it get it and the girls who don't don't. And I don't think if you don't get it that that's a bad thing. But I use this for things beyond. I put this on eye looks all the time. Anytime I want to add texture to something like cool toned, I pull this out. You can see there's a little bit of a dent in the top there. Um, it's kind of like a putty, but it's it's interesting. It's like this really silicone-y, no pigment, only shimmer situation. And it just really gives you a twinkle. And it's, I do sometimes really like that wet look. And this is the more subtle version of that. I have like also the more intense version of that in the Ritual Defeat, which we'll talk about in a second. But I wish the packaging didn't fall off, but it doesn't, it's not an aversion for me to use this. I just ripped it off because I was tired of dealing with it. But I think this is a really cool product and I'm happy that Fenty made it so keeping that. Then I have this from Pat McGrath. This is whenever the skin fetish kits were a thing and this is iridescent pink and I believe that this exists in that trio that Pat McGrath has on her website and so this is like a bit of a duochrome pink but I feel very similar to this that I do a about the Ritual de Fee highlighters, the Rare Light Luminizers, where it has this duochrome, but it wears really beautiful on the cheek. And it's not, it's not super obnoxious. And I am never disappointed when I put that on my cheek. Whenever I'm doing something pinky and I want that, just that glow, this is what I reach for. It's really pretty. I reach for it more now as my highlighter collection has dwindled over the past couple of declutters I've done. The first time it made it through a declutter, I was like, I want to use that more. And then I use it a little bit more and then I use it a little bit more. It's not my number one highlighter, right? I, as I, I said, like, this is where I'm like living currently in these three, but I definitely 
wear it enough to warrant keeping it around. So I will. Finally, here is like my last couple Ritual Defee highlighters. And these are in the Metamorphic. Oh no, I have one Rare Light Luminizer. And then I also have the Alchemist, which is like a different thing than the rest of them. And then I also have the Fawn. So we'll move these ones up here for a second. So Solaris is one of my older Ritual Defee highlighters. And I went to use it the other day. But I still really like this. There's a huge divot in here. And I bet it wouldn't take me much longer, like if I use it every day, to hit pan. It's kind of similar to Phosphine, but it like kind of goes the other way. It's just a little bit lighter than Phosphine. But it, it's kind of, it's like, it's like a warm champagne that shifts into an iridescent pink. It's still performing, but you can see that it's like drying up along the edges and kind of coming away from the pan. Lunaris I also had, and mine went bad last year. I could definitely smell it. This one doesn't smell good. It doesn't smell bad. I don't know. I probably should just, I'm going to call it. I'm going to throw this away. I will miss it though, because I do reach for this one, because sometimes I want this one over Phosphine. But they serve a similar enough purpose now that I don't need to like run out and buy this, but I really like this. I could see myself buying more Rare Light Luminizers, but not more metamorphic highlighters uh, to add to my collection. But yeah, this one has, it's, it's it still performs fine. It doesn't smell very good, which is, you know, probably should be putting on my face. Okay, then I have these three and they're not going anywhere because I like them all. This is the Chimera and I bought it when it was limited edition, but this is now a site exclusive. It's a green highlighter. I don't have a lot of reasons to wear a green highlighter, but it's one of those things like if I'm doing a neutral look, I can throw it on for some interest. Also throwing this on the inner corner, you know, will do some things for you. But it's really pretty. It has like particles of mica in there or particles of something that really make it sparkle but I, I love this it's it feels special and it feels like special in a more unique way I just feel like we don't see a lot of like green highlighters anymore and I think that Ritual Defeat did it really well where like that doesn't feel like slap in your face green but it's certainly there but it's not like the moon child palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills it's like not that deep then I have the fawn which I also bought when it was limited edition, but now it is a site exclusive. It is a beautiful pink highlight that shifts a little bit green. And this is like whenever I'm doing a look lurk and I'm going out at night and I want to sparkle. I feel like even between the Chimera and this one, the chunks are a lot bigger in this formula of Smica than it is in the Chimera. So the Chimera is like a little more like quote unquote elegant in that way. It's so fun. It's like one of those things where it's like, I'm glad to have it. Is it. Does it get the most play in my collection? No, but it's really beautiful. And then this is the Alchemist, which is like, um, they, they kind of advertise it as a highlight, a topper for your highlight. So it's like this big, big, very different, varied chunks of mica in a clear base. And it also kind of serves the same purpose as the Fenty Diamond Balm in How Many Carrots, where it's like, you want a wet looking cheek. The only thing about this is when you apply it, you do have to rub it. So my preferred methodology of applying a cream highlighter, even on top of a creams, is to kind of tap. But when you tap, some of the chunks stick together and they don't break apart and they don't make like a very smooth look. But whenever you do rub it into the skin a little bit, then the mica, you know, more evenly disperses. That's like my only complaint about it. I obviously hit pan on this. I, I love, I love this. I don't use it as much anymore, but I want to get it back into rotation because, you know, whenever I want to glow, when I want to sparkle in a real way, that's what I'm. That's what I want. Also, taking these two, using this first, and then topping it with this. That's like the highlight. All right, so I'm keeping... And yeah, and I got rid of two. <sighs> that feels good. So my blushes all and highlighters all fit in this one, which they didn't before. And then my bronzers can fit in the second one. Okay, I'm ready to move on to eyeshadows. Are you?
here are my eyeshadow palettes. So these are just my palettes. These does not include my singles. I'll show you my singles in a moment when we're done with all of this. I will not be decluttering any of my single eyeshadows at this time. I'm doing a bigger project with them. If you want to know more about that project, I will link it up above. But a brief overview is I don't really use eyeshadow palettes really much anymore. I mostly throw on a couple of mattes and then I take an indie shadow and I like smear it on my lid and I kind of call it what it is. And while I appreciate that like color stories are being created in eyeshadow palettes, I don't think that it's something that I utilize or really need as an eyeshadow wearer anymore. I'm more into like more simple looks. Every now and then I do like to construct a look, but I can also do that with other things. So right now, a lot of my eyeshadows are out of rotation because I'm focusing on only the eyeshadow palettes that have mattes in them that I can easily pair up with some of my single shades. So for example, this is the Viseart Grand Pro 1X. It's a bunch of matte eyeshadows and these, this is really great for when I want to build my own palette or do brow palette because you can pop these out and this isn't going anywhere because it's like more utilitarian than anything else. It's not the most exciting palette but it allows me to use eyeshadow in the way that I currently like to use eyeshadow. The Natasha Denona Yucca palette is still new to me so right now this is not one of my eyeshadows that is not in rotation. I'm still playing with this getting to know it but I really like this eyeshadow palette. I think Natasha Denona did a really good job with this color story because it's very much my speed. And another thing that she did is she made these beautiful textured shimmer metallic shades and I really like those. So this is going to go right back in my eyeshadow palette drawer. Then I have both of Hindash's palettes. This is Beautopsy. Much like the shadows from Viseart, this is something that I can easily pull out and build a matte look and then put shimmers on. And then I also have Monochromance. And this is the like more colorful version, I would say, where I can build a more colorful matte look and then also put a shimmer on. I think that of the matte shadows that I have, Hindash and Viseart are two of my favorite matte eyeshadow formulas. So they make sense for me to build out looks with and complete out looks with. So I really appreciate uh, having something like this. So these ones are still currently in rotation for me. And then the last thing that's on this table that is still in rotation is the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette. I know this was limited edition, but I use these mattes all the time, again, to build out a matte look and then go from there with some different shimmers. I also really like the shimmers in this eyeshadow palette, but I mostly use the mattes. I mean, I do like, I use the shimmers also. So this is something that is still in rotation. I'll use this with indie eyeshadows as well. So this is something that I like to keep out. I think Mario's mattes are really nice. I've heard that the mattes in the, the matte, like the all matte palette from Mario are a little bit different. I have never tried those, but I like this one and I like this palette a lot. Like I just, it's one of, it's a default palette for me. We'll save the Pat McGrath for the end and then we'll talk about these. So as I said, I am doing a project with my eyeshadows where I, I took all of my eyeshadow palettes out of my drawers and I will bring them back in if I miss them. So in front of me, I have a couple palettes that I think are going to make their way back into my eyeshadow palette drawer relatively quickly. And then a couple that aren't. I really like the industrial colors pigment palette from Isamea. I'll probably never buy anything else from this brand again but I really like this eyeshadow palette and honestly the functionality of this is more of like 14 indie singles. Well I would say more like 12. The The matte black creams in here are not really like single eyeshadows. A lot of the shades in here are things that you can like throw on top of or work into a look really easily. So yeah I'm gonna put this back in the place where I have my eyeshadows hidden away. Next up is the gold palette. This is also something that I think that will find its way back into my drawers relatively quickly. Now I have a lot of depotted Natasha Denona eyeshadows but I kept this palette intact because I really like this palette as is. Now it doesn't mean I'll never take these out of here to throw them into custom palettes or you know make a smaller version of the gold palette so maybe I can travel with it but the way that I see it is that this is going to be a pretty perfect palette. It is one of the ones that I have hidden away because I just want to see what I do if I miss it truly. But I, I don't know. I don't think this one is one that's going to go anywhere. I guess we could talk about this. This is the Hip Dot and Evanescence IP collab. <laughs> so it's the album Fallen and this is the Color Story 
that HipDoc came up with. Now, if you weren't here, <laughs> I did a video on this. When this first launched, I I hadn't quite had nostalgia makeup really slap me in the face before, and then this kind of did because I, I really, this album was really meaningful to me whenever I was younger. I only ever used it the one time in that video. So HipDot saw my video of me being like, how dare you, HipDot, <laughs> come from my neck like this and try to make me buy nostalgia makeup, but I kept, the video is mostly about how like, it's never going to be what we want it to be. So I view this more as merch. The eyeshadows were fine. <laughs> they were fine. Blue is not like my color story as it is. But an another thing was the shimmers really fell off my eyes pretty quickly and creased. Uh, it kind of looked cool because of, you know, the, the nature of this depth of colors. It's like, you know, kind of was like giving me this like very cool grungy look. Kind of like I'm doing with the Pat McGrath highlighter. I'm going to keep this for the sake of the story, and but I'm not going to keep it in my makeup drawer because I'm never going to use it. Like I'm never going to use it. I don't know. It's like not, these are the eyeshadows. Like it's very cool that they sent it to me. I think that the eyeshadows are fine, but they're not eyeshadows that I'm going to reach for very often. And it's like such a cool thing to have. Uh, I'm sorry to anyone who didn't get it, and maybe people who were planning on buying it because they really like the color story. But uh, you know, I can do whatever I want with it because it is mine. So it will be. A little bit of a display piece. But then these are some of my miniature palettes. I have the mini Zendo and I also have the mini Retro. And I also have this Petite Soleil 5 from Viseart. I think I wanted to clutter this small Viseart palette. I really like it and I love Viseart eyeshadows. I really do. With my Grand Pro in play, I just am never reaching for this. And I think someone else will like this a lot more than me. So I think it's just time for me to give that one up. Now, I'm a little more torn when it comes to these. The mini retro is the first mini Natasha Denona I bought. I had other Natasha Denona eyeshadows. I just had never bought a mini. I don't, did I do that? Just, I really don't know when I did that. I love the shade Galaxia over here. So I'm, I'm going to keep this one. I, I think I use this one a lot more than I use the mini Zendo. I like the mini Zendo quite a bit. I don't know if it's something that is warranted to be like kept in my collection. I use it twice a year and every time I use it I think wow my eyeshadow looks really good. <laughs> but I just like never really think to reach for it because the not that the color story is weird like right I and, and every time I use it I use all of the shades like I I do the same look every time I open this up where I, I know exactly I can tell you I mean like exactly what's look I would put this all over the lid I put this in the crease I would put this all over the lid on top I would deepen out the outer corner with this and I would put this on the inner corner kind of as a highlight and that's how I would wear this leaves how I wear it every time I wear it I'm gonna keep it in as for the sake of the project and if I don't miss it then I think it'll be good for it to go I think I'd be sooner to pull out this one but honestly it's like will I really pull out either of them and perhaps it could be a case of Maybe I do out these palettes with my singles and other mattes and see if I can make the same thing. Which I'm like sure I could, but it's like, are these looks that warrant their own eyeshadow palettes? Do you know what I mean? Although I really do like that shade. And that would be, that'd be the problem of me getting rid of this is that I would not have that shade anymore. I do like this color story, but when I use this, I use the two mattes and that for the most part. I almost never use that shade over there. I have six Pat McGrath Mothership palettes. I don't want to have all of these. <laughs> like, I don't want to have all of these, but there are some shades that I really like in these. They're like really like, we'll definitely miss them when they're gone, but I probably don't use them as much because of the situation. But the ones I'm going to keep intact are Mothership 1. I think this is one of Pat McGrath's best color stories because it is actually cool toned which we don't actually see it's grays it's blues it's silvers i really like it it's not like sometimes i do cool tone color stories and i really like that and i think what i achieve on my own typically is better than what i achieve with this but i like i like this one as a whole unfortunately this really boring one really sings to me i love every time i wear it i like the way it looks i love the shade over here i kind of like the whole thing that's happening in here so i will also be keeping that one intact and then also for Divine Rose 2, here's the thing. I don't always think about this eyeshadow palette, but anytime I use this eyeshadow palette, I get so many compliments on my look. So I think it's worth keeping around. And also I have like the beautiful limited edition packaging. So for that also, I'm going to keep it. But here's the plan with these three. I don't know what the best way to do this is. This one is my oldest Pat McGrath palette. 
And I like this palette. I think it's one of the most, I think it's also one of her more popular Mothership palettes. I remember when this one came out, a lot of people were like, oh, what's Pat McGrath doing? I like, the th I love these four special shades. However, the last time I, last couple times I used this, the mattes really crapped out on me. They weren't really blending that well. I get them to work, but it wasn't what I remember. And I already don't really love the matte eyeshadows from Pat McGrath. So for them to not be performing at their, even their best, which is like not my favorite, I was like, well, I think it's time to call it what it is. Midnight Sun, I have long claimed, is my favorite Pat McGrath palette. And I I actually do stand by that. However, what's more important to me are the, the special shades, but not all of them. This one, and then this one, and this one, I want to keep. And I can put them over here, take out, take out these mattes and these shimmers, and I'm going to make my own. I'm a little nervous to do it, but like, I don't know why I'm feeling so precious about it. And then in this mothership, I think this is a good mothership palette. However, I... Again, I like these three shimmers, these three baked shades the best. And I can just make my own special shade Mothership palette. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to depot these ones out of here. Take the three I want from here and put them in here. Take the three I want from here and put them in here. And that's what I'm going to do. It's going to bother some people. Get some blood up boiling. But the, I spent the money on these and I can do whatever I want with them. So that way I will then only have four and then one of them is going to be like one that I made and it will be my special one and I might even ruin the packaging even though I like this packaging I think that this packaging is gorgeous but I think I might just you know because it's mine and I'm making it my own unique thing I might I don't know maybe I'll paint some nail polish on it or something to give it like an iridescent I don't know I don't know I'll gonna do something with it that's what I want to do this is the Gucci palette beauté de you lovely formula I get on with it really well I never use it it never comes to mind. It is never, it's even lower than my Pat McGrath palettes. It's like never an eyeshadow palette that I need to use. And I think it's time for me to declutter it. It is really a beautiful item to hold, much like the Pat McGrath. Like it, it's like similar experience, like to the holding the Pat McGrath. It's really gorgeous. But unlike some of the other really beautiful things that I'm holding on to, I think I would rather pass this on to someone who uses it who will love it and not just me holding on to it it was probably not the best purchase for me i think in the moment it made more sense than it did once i got it home there is a part of me that is someone who would like use this all the time but it just never gets pulled out and it just shouldn't languish something this beautiful should be used and it's not being used by me so I'm going to get rid of it. It's not even going to hang around for the project. I don't even think I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss being able to like interact with it sometimes, but I'm going to just pass it on to someone else who will love it undyingly. So as I promised, I will speed run through some single shadows. So in this palette, this is, a, <laughs> I put all my Earth, Earthborn Shine by SD shades in here. I really love them. And I also have, these are the couple shades from Terra Moons I have. I really don't want to, I need to take out the Terra Moons ones and just leave this as the Earthborn. I pull out my Earthborn shades like all of the time all the time and I want them in something like smaller and easier for me to grab because I use them so much. And here these are mattes that I've depotted from uh, various eyeshadow palettes. These ones down here from a different brand, some Sugar Pill, some Natasha Denona up top, some Melt, some Viseart, some you know Lethal, some whatever that brand is. I can't even remember their name. This is all of my shimmers and satins. A lot of Cleona up top. Natasha Denona on the bottom with some random brands in between. Here's some more Natasha Denona shades. Another sugar pill. There should be a second one of these. Did it break? I don't know. Where did it go? I have no idea where it is. There should be another one of these. Or maybe I decluttered it and I just kept this one. I actually don't know. I'm pretty certain I thought I'd... Anyway, some Pat McGrath uh, shades that I depotted from other things. And then some other Pat McGrath things that I just kind of destroyed. So that's all of the single eyeshadows I have floating around. I get really overwhelmed when I'm, anytime I try to like go through my singles collection, I get overwhelmed. It's like something that I like, I either need to do slower over time or do just like entirely off camera. So that's probably what I will choose to do. <laughs> anyway. If you're new to my channel and you enjoyed today's video, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like the video. I hope that this was like long enough for you. 
to fall asleep to, whatever you like to use it for. And I'm also on Patreon.com again if you like to support me there, no pressure. And what I'm going to leave you with is me filling my drawers back up. I feel like I got rid of a good amount of stuff that's going to be at least out of my makeup drawers, if not entirely out of my life, which is great. I'm excited to see what happens. I need to throw those away. Anyway, uh, here's the goodbye footage, and then I will see you in a video very soon.